space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. What does the frog say? What the fuck? But shit, it was 99 cents. I get copping it, washing it. About to go and get some compliments. Passing up on those moccasins. Someone else has been walking in by me. well hello everybody and hey. um uh, welcome to the Friday Pot Dog Live so hello. um this is the first time I've ever done a live when I've not seen the intro, so I was watching that for the very first time. Um, yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So, um, right, well, hello everyone again, uh, Finley, dude. Ah, nice to see you back, back on top. Back on top, he's obviously yeah, got a new yeah. phone. Yeah, I, I, I think personally he's taking um, um, uh, enhancement drugs, you know, he, you know he's he's uh, taking some kind of like special, you know, you know just to be a... Starting off with a bit of libel, uh, I'll slap yeah. there, never remember which one's well, verbal, no. which one's verbal. Yeah, used to be an athletics, all these people are so, so, so much better than everyone else, slander. you know, it was always, you know, uh, one's written. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. Coke. Do you know? Coke. Coca-Cola. Slander. Yeah. Slander's got to be. Which slander's one's got written? Got which one's, which one's verbal? Is it libel or slander? Is it libel's got to be written. Slander's um, it is verbel. Um, is it? Yeah, and libel's yeah, written? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, good right, good anyway, to yeah, sure, yeah, should, should, should you want to press charges, it'll be slander. Well, I said he's doing coke, basically, you know. No fee for that. Coke makes it really fast and everything. It's all the sugar in it. It's just like, you know. Yeah, very good. You need to move to Coke Zero. Robert Van Buren, second, my friend. You need to get on there, you know. Otto um, says, uh, uh, hey everyone, thank you so much for the spoon. I was very surprised to find in my letterbox yesterday. <laughs> You're welcome, Otto, but we did say we'll send you the spoon. The guy, I can't remember who it was who won now, um, who won the um, uh, <coughs> Yuri Geller set, didn't want the spoon. He was happy to do it uh, to you. So uh, yeah. You asked for it, mate. You can hang that on your wall. Um, just don't blow it up. Oh, he um, got a Yuri one, did he? Oh, he got a proper one. No, so no, no, no. So uh, if you remember, the Yuri, the, the customer. I, don't, I wasn't here for this. Right, so we sent the Yuri out. Okay. Right, and when he got it, apparently the spoon had gone. I see. So he returned it to us. We sent him a new one with a spoon, which meant we had the DVD without the spoon. Oh. So we, we auctioned it off as a prize. And I said, for uh, jokingly, if you want, I'll sign a spoon myself. Oh, fine. You. Okay. Uh, and the customer who won, I said, uh, but Otto said he wanted one. So I said, well, what if I send your spoon to Otto? And the customer's like, yeah, I don't want it. Yeah, it's fine. Fine. So he got one of our spoons. Yeah, so, okay. so, uh, you didn't watch it on catch up then? Despite the fact you were at home for two days this week, you didn't find time to watch the live. Mate, I, didn't, I don't find any time when I'm at home. This is this is this is what I come to work. Oh, right. Oh. Um, okay. Um, uh, so uh, what we're going to talk about today? Um, uh, oh, we, we we may have a special guest. Um, uh, uh, Ali Cook may be coming along to uh, to join us and chat about his foolish uh, adventures. Mm. Uh, he's not here yet. Um, uh, he may or may not turn up. Um, so uh, hopefully he does. Uh, then we're going to talk about. Um, uh, a little something we're uh, developing. We're going to show you a little prototype and get your opinions because um, rather than just building a prototype and putting it out there, we thought, well, why not show it to you guys? And you guys can say, you know what, that's good, but if you did this or that, it'll be even better. And that way we get to build a much better product with thanks to all you guys. Mm. Uh, um, then we're going to talk about uh, the hip hop, hip hop, hip hop, hippity hip hop rabbits. Uh... <laughs> Alex's new favourite release this week. Yeah. Um, for your entertainment pleasure, uh, by Daryl. Um, Alex's what's... book corner. That. What? For your entertainment. Yeah. What? Yeah. what? Alex's book corner is for your entertainment pleasure, or for it your entertainment... is. for <laughs> your entertainment pleasure. We have Alex's book corner, which is <laughs> for your entertainment pleasure. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, plots, ploys, and other cons by Brent Bourne. Uh, Brent Bourne. Um, and Extreme Burn is back in stock. So uh, when we're going to tell them that the stream burn is back in stock? Oh, later. Maybe later. later Four, on. Okay. 40 we'll, minutes yeah, in, we'll maybe? Yeah, we'll tell you then. Yeah, we'll let, them, let the people yeah, yeah, that are late yeah. come. See if anyone asks. So, um, yeah, but, about the big news. Other than that, there's not too much to talk about. It's a fairly quiet uh, <coughs> session today, um, just because it's quiet and not a lot of news has come in. But yeah. uh, I'm sure, like uh, Alex and I, is a very quiet one. It will go on for uh, far too long. <laughs> Uh, John Middleton uh, says, uh, afternoon all. Andy Tingley says, hi guys, and Bobo. Jonas says, good afternoon all. Afternoon, Jonas. Cheers. Um, 
Uh, Finley says, um, uh, oh no, I need a new phone. I think this is the worst I've ever done. Uh, Finley, you were, Finley first you were first on our computer, to mate. Yeah, so uh, yeah, you're not all the way down there. Uh, I think maybe he sent a hi before we started and just presumed uh, and didn't realise. Oh, that? don't let... Yeah. That's a glimpse behind the magician's cloth, mm. if anything. That, is, that is, move that. You can do that. that. What? You have the tickles? You're in a funny mood today. She is. Yeah. Yeah. very aggressive. Um, the Finley... Uh, yeah. uh, no, we're doing that one. Uh, Martin uh, Album, uh, he says, uh, Good afternoon, prop doggers. I hope you are all well. We are very well. I'm well. Mm. Are you well? Yeah. Alex? I'm always well. He's always well. Mm. You're a bit, a bit grumpy today, though, aren't you? I've been tired, Jason. Really I said I was tired, grumpy today. not grumpy. I didn't. It's, it's just tired because we're. Well, he's tired of us all just um, having a go at him about his boat all day long. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Just tired of that. Um, uh, Kevin Peel says hi, all you foxy guys. Uh, thank you. Uh, no up, uh, fox updates today, so um, uh, I've still left the cage basically unhinged just to see what he's doing, and he's just going in, getting bits of food, and going in and out, and that's about it really. So I'm just going to leave it there for a little while and getting more comfortable with it before. You're now just attracting him to your garden. I know. He You've may gone have gone from wanting up. to get rid of him to. <laughs> Oh, so I could just come and well, eat now. The thing is, you know, I go out there every morning, you know, ready to, uh, you know, see him in there and everything, and uh, and he's not. And it's purely because he's so nervous of the case, because he's been trapped twice in it now. He's so nervous, he doesn't want to go too far in. So I'm just going to leave it. It's just it's sitting outside. The food's in there. The, the, the weather's cold, so the food's not going off. I'm just going to leave it be, ignore it all, and then in a couple of weeks' time, um, I'm going to start. You did bring us in a special treat earlier, though, didn't you? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. The brilliant thing about that fox is is he may have just got bored. If none of this had ever happened, he may have just got bored and gone to someone else's garden by now, which mm. <laughs> which is great. Which is great. Right, uh, Hans is there. Hello, oh, Hans. He says, hi, friends. Uh, George yeah. is there. Hello, George. And Stacey is on. Uh, hello, Stacey. Uh, What's that? What you doing, Pat? Or should I say, uh, 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 good day, Stacey. Um, Andrew Vaughan says mega intro. Yeah, Simon yeah. Keen, afternoon all. Rita's there. Hello, Rita. Uh, she says hello. As is Frank Hi, in Rita. Florida. Hi, Frank. Says, hello, Frank. Hi, dudes. Hello, Frank. Uh, Hi, dudes. Kenny. Uh, well, I'm a dude. Yeah, you can only get away with that if, yeah, if you're from Florida. Dude. I think. Dude. Yeah, he's cool. Uh, yippee! It's Prop Dog Friday again. Says Kenny Cadabra. Uh, Walter says uh, good afternoon all and uh, afternoon to you, Walter. And Hi, thank Walter. you for your order. The other Please, day. you got the app ready now. Yes. Well. Yes. Um, uh, how is everyone doing with the app, by the way? Um, so the card oracle uh, you saw last week, we've sold quite a few of them. And uh, mm, look at paper. Yeah. Got one head in there, looking into the hat. Still, yeah, I know. Um, do you want to get in that, Bobo? It's not a crayfish in there this mm. this time. <laughs> what is it? Cyborg so still scarred for life about that. Yeah, yeah. If, if you, um... <laughs> he's only going to forgive you for that. What's it, Bobo? Oh no, Dave! Don't yeah. no, Dave! Oh. You're gonna, they're gonna catapult now. Oh, what's that? Oh, I love that balance. <laughs> like, uh, Eamon says, uh, Hi everyone, love the opening credits. They're getting better every week. I'm a truckie, so I like the star oh God, credits. You freaked out. <laughs> yeah, you have. Freaked that? me out. What? She's just going mental for that. Are you being now? a silly bird? Oh, you go for the. I think, because this time of year, she always gets a bit weird. And I think it's a mating season thing because usually when they have chicks, they have them in February. And with the gestation period, this would be around the right time they want to find a mate. So right. sometimes she gets a little bit dominant and starts struggling. Yeah, sure. well, I'm, very, flat be, I'm yeah. very flattered, Bobo, but, yes. but please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David Murphy says, hi all, or hello everyone. Um, hi from Intensive Care, says Chris Galindas. Oh, uh, Chris, God. I hope you are okay, my friend. I know you have your transfusions usually, but hopefully you're not too unwell. Uh, well, yeah. Stacey yeah, says, I live seen. for these intros. <laughs> <laughs> you see, all these effort for the intros, they are appreciated, you know, mm. they are. Uh, Andy Timmy says, squareheads! Oh, uh, we've got, fa uh, yeah, we've got the squares over our faces, look. We oh, we do, don't we? Uh, oh, have you been playing around with the camera settings? You've been videoing all week, haven't you? Yeah, yeah but I have didn't, been. Didn't, didn't, yeah, extracurricular uh, videoing. Who put the camera, set the camera up to me? That's the slot there. Okay, right, I wonder, I wonder who's fault. Get these off. Right, okay, this is clearly my fault, so, um, right, I'm so, sorry, everybody. Right, read, read some more comments. Still on that. Um... Dave and Alex are squares. What's with the boxes around your faces? Well, Frank, that is because I set the camera up and um, um, I didn't save it to the normal setting. Normal, normal really setting. Finley, Mr. Southgate says, "Oh yeah, I've done it. Yep. Uh, I've I've done it, Finley. If we're if we're being correct, um, this is the teacher speaking. Mr. Lipkin, you have tracking boxes around your face. Well, I guess Simon, we we're aware. We're aware. Uh, Richard Ferzer, afternoon chaps. Robert Van Buren, only this week." Don't know what that means. Um, 
Oh, Finley's going to say that we had boxes around our faces as well. Come so, on, come so on. We know we've got boxes. We're we going to get boxes. rid of the boxes. Dave is behind oh, the scenes Dave. now. Oh, my God. Oh, hello. Oh, you know that everyone's seeing the... Oh, they've gone. Why have you got the camera trying to focus on Dave's face with a square? Yeah, Is that no, because right. he was in the Marines and he has a square head? <laughs> Turn off your focus tracking system. Okay, right. All right, okay. all right. I'm going to move past. I'm going to move past right. all this. This so is the face seems tracking. Fine now, yeah, Dave. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, George Grayson, little George, little G says he's loving mental die, and so he should. So you should, George. I thought you were getting that for Christmas. You little. No, it's still on there. They're not <sighs> on the screen. Any shipping date They're for the ring here. boxes confirmed yet? Says Otar. Well, where are we at with the ring boxes? So uh, I think we still don't know. have slightly been delayed due yep. to Corona. They did give a very optimistic date, didn't they? And then um, they did. They didn't materialise. So as soon as we get them, guys, oh, you no. will get them because you know how fast our shipping is. Oh. Uh, we're down to Jonas's comment. If, yeah, uh, guys, if the focus tracking <coughs> square is on there, let us know. It's not on here at the moment. Um, so yeah, let us know. Oh, Ali's here. Come on in, Ali. We're going to have about 30 people right. selling us okay. now. Come on yeah, in, mate. Hello. So, uh, right, mask on. Oh, I haven't so, got one. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, crap on. Yeah. So uh, Ali Cook is in the house, hey! Wait. So, uh, <laughs> right, so um, uh, yeah, what we'll do, Ali, we'll we'll just go through some of the comments, and then we'll bring you on in a minute, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, do you want to see a coffee? Or, uh, hmm? We take them off for the interview. Or? Um, I don't think we can at the moment. I do think, we have to properly keep uh, them? I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no uh, especially yeah. as we're a live show, and um, uh, <laughs> there are competitors out there watching that would love to get us in trouble. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, unfortunately, we've got to wear That'd the mask be for a while. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you want a cup of tea or coffee while you're here? Oh, I'd love yeah. a coffee. Yeah, no yeah. worries. Do you want to crack on with some of the comments? And, and yeah, I'll, I'll get the coffee. we can crack on with some of the comments. Uh, right, Jonas is telling us about face tracking. Thank you, Jonas. Um, Stephen Blair says, Afternoon, boys, and the bird. I meant Bobo. Yeah, Mila and Mel are definitely offended by that comment. Uh, Andrew Vaughan, can you demo deal... Not deal, I'm guessing deal or no deal, or deal not deal by Michael Chatelain. It is deal not deal. It um, is. Dave did that, that was during the first lockdown, I think. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, that was um, a long time ago. I can't remember, but it is very, very good. Um, we'll have to ask Dave when he gets back because um, I haven't looked at it. Yeah, uh, Jeffrey uh, Urch, I guess, is this is for you, Alex. He says, cheer up, Captain Pugwash. Thank you very much. Uh, no, sorry, Rob, I'm not. I if am... you're familiar with Captain Pugwash, I don't know if you are in Australia. That's definitely one for next week. So I am so basically I'm tired because obviously I finish work here and then I go and work on the boat and I get in late and um, yeah. So I'm just tired. I'm just tired. I am happy. Just tired. Good. Uh, Nigel Quinn, afternoon chaps. Hope you're all keeping safe and well. Great intro, messing about in the water. Yep. Uh, yes. Um, do do do. Mitos Tzavalos. Any Black Friday deals? No. Enough said. Uh, for, well, right, let's talk about Black Friday deals because we've had probably about 60 people ask us this today. We, uh, we do our reward points, so we, we give you deals all year round and you can save 5%. And, so, and what you will find is that most of the people who are offering Black Friday deals, they're offering exactly the same items, and that's because they haven't actually got them in stock. It is no. the Black Friday sale that Murphy's, Murphy's the wholesaler, are doing, and so they can drop their prices automatically because yep. if they buy them in, they get them at the reduced price and it works that way. Because we actually have stuff in stock, uh, we don't do it quite in the, same, in, the same, in the same way. So we operate no. slightly differently. So we actually, because we do keep things in stock, um, we tend to have paid the full price for them already. So we don't, get, uh, we don't take advantage of the deals in quite the same way. Well, no, and I'm sure you all know that a lot of the Black Friday deals, they, they put the prices up the week before, <laughs> reduce yeah, yeah. them. To yeah, the and also price anyway, find, so you can tell it's not really a genuine sale by uh, by the other shops because they, if you'll find things in sale they don't actually have in stock. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah. Is, which I've, I've always struck me as very surprising. So there you go. Anyway, That's strange. So, yep. uh, Finley, I bought an extreme. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. I bought an extreme burn from Secondhand Magic. Great uh, group near the start of the first lockdown. Still haven't bought any rubber cement. When I go to order, I end up doing something else and forget about it. Can't well, really help you there, Finley. No, Basically, I think that's a problem that you've got, Finley. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can stick it in your basket now, <laughs> and it will still be there when you come to check out. It will. Um, or leave a note um, saying, or, or just include one. Do you know what? I, I hate that with shopping carts. A few times I've gone to order from places. Oh, it's so annoying. I've man. loaded a load of stuff in the shopping cart. I've gone to make a cup of tea, come back, yeah, and it's yeah. empty. Yeah. Oh, oh what's well, really well, I, like, no, I, I thought like... you were going to say when you put something in your cart and then decide not to take it, and then you get an email 20 minutes later oh. going, oh, oh no, no, oh, no, would you like to oh, buy I this? Do so, oh, one, really one, one of no, my I'm hobbies is going on websites I can't afford and filling up the basket. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to decide, you know, is that, oh, that, 
you know, the helipad's not quite big enough on the back of that yacht. So, uh, you know, so I always, I always do that. Yeah. I fill up my car. Are yeah, you getting a helipad on the back of your boat, yeah? And then back <laughs> <laughs> Coffee's on there, Ali. Oh, there you go. Uh, right, what a miss. Not, not a lot. Somebody asking about Black Friday deals and we were oh, just explaining it's why Black we don't Friday today to anyway, it. isn't it? Yeah. So well, you should have noticed we haven't got a sale. We're going to do a sale most likely, aren't we, over Christmas. Uh, block a Boxing Day sale and uh, unlike um, the oh, well, every single other magic shop in the entire world that's doing the same sale on the same stuff today, we're going to do uh, probably 15% off everything in the entire shop. Oh, I mean, Everything. Oh, And probably 20% Madness. of all prop dog products. I'm coming in that Madness. day. I'm shopping yes. that day. So the, we really are doing a proper sale for everybody rather than just the same old stuff. Uh, that there's this, um, what, yeah. even this? Everything. Wow. Everything. Even this? Even that. 15% of everything in the shop. Even, even yes. Wow, Black Friday also even goes on for about a month even as well, this. doesn't it? It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, this, this would be this would be like a uh, uh, um, uh, probably either a Boxing Day sale or maybe a do it as a Christmas Eve and a Boxing Day sale, maybe two days, we'll see. Oh, but it's a genuine so, sale yeah. of stock. Happy we'll days, happy Absolutely. days. Right, anyway, on with the show, as they say. Um, uh, yeah, we well, were down to Walter. We were oh, basically at Walter. So you're not liking the comments like you should, so we know we're Oh, done sorry, them. I didn't. Oh, come on, huh? sorry, amateur. Are you blind? Yes, oh, yes, right, yes, yeah. yes, I am. <laughs> uh, Jonas says, uh, believe it or not, I'm sober today. Got, uh, uh, got to, uh, what was that? We recorded some clips uh, and record to new show. show. Record so, well, sounds, right. sounds like you're not actually yeah. sober. In other words, you're Jonas. working today, Jonas. Jonas. <laughs> it's funny. I don't he believe writes, you, Jonas. He writes less well when he's sober. He does, yeah. Drink up, Jonas. Jonas right? Yeah, we can understand what you're yeah. saying then. <laughs> George says, I'll be coming in next week. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Yeah, so more. what happens yes. on the... So on the second, it's probably, probably worth talking about this are we back to just we're back to social distancing in the shop oh is that how it works so we're back to kind of where we're as a, yeah so from the 2nd of november we'll be back open sorry 2nd of december yeah. uh, back open as a normal shop and people can come and go as they want as long as they're going to wear a mask in the shop fine and that's it so pretty much as is yeah we're all Happy back days. to normal yeah so uh right richard uh Fraser says uh, what no squares uh, i think i've removed them i don't know what i did i just yeah. pressed a load of random buttons well it seems to have worked uh adam adam evans says a card oracle is awesome did it over zoom it's a miracle uh good to hear adam thank you for the card for the recommendation george says uh black friday deals uh we've discussed that already george alex has um, loved hearing about adam's uh, experiences this week haven't you i have every I have. day kept me in touch yeah every day did he yeah, yeah, he's been he's so tough for that app. And and in fairness to Adam, he's been helping a lot of people on the Facebook page, which ah. is which is very kind. Thank you, Adam. Uh, Graham Thomas says greetings from Cyprus. I am uh look le kind. Le kind. Le kind? What does that mean? I am le kind. I guess that's a, 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 an autocorrect typo. Uh, what, what was the other bit he said? Uh, greetings, greetings from, from Cyprus. Cyprus. Right. I am le kind. <laughs> typo? Does he mean he's blind? Maybe he means he's on the loo um, and he's being kind. <laughs> oh, I don't know, yeah. Being kind uh, Nigel Quinn says a Black Friday deal on Richard Young's changing cards, 15% off code Black Friday 2. Well, that's good. Um, that's worthwhile. Yeah. Well, we do 15 half percent off his cards when we do the sale. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark Patrick Kavanagh says, uh, hi guys, but it's cold in the Alex boat. Uh, you're not living in there yet, though, are you, Alex? Uh, no, there's nothing in it. It's not, yeah. yeah. But it's not wet. It's not that's the important the thing. Yeah. It's not wet at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> No fishing is in, in, in Although my, bil yeah, my, yeah. my bilge is filling up, apparently. Your bilge? My bilge. That sounds painful. Is that a euphemism? <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple of bilge. Uh, Jolson uh, says, uh, cheers, Jonas. I'm not sober either. Um, what is it with you people being sober today? None of them are working, Dave, aren't it's they? It's a Friday night. None of them are working. <laughs> well, they can't afford beer. Well, well, oh, yeah, they, should be, well. they should be drinking, really, just oh, yeah, to down true. the trials and get the... No, I do not condone drinking. Um, because just of the reflection, <laughs> just go. Yeah. Um, because of the reflection, it looks like the mental dye boxes only say dye, not really to eco packaging. <laughs> they do as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Never notice that. Um, while we're talking about dye, really quickly, should we uh, talk about a dye box very quickly? Yeah, we can do. We'll yeah. talk about that, and then yeah. we'll get Ali on. Uh, yeah, yeah. And have a little chat about Ali. Right. Um, so, I mean, do you want to introduce this? I mean. Yeah, so basically, you know, the dye box is a great little product and there's been quite a few designs over the years and um, we got some not so long ago um, from uh, George Gavari. Um, but uh, I mean, George is getting a little bit old now and uh, his workmanship isn't quite what it used to be and we decided that maybe we should rebuild it a little bit better before we sell it. And then we come up with the idea, I think it was you, Jason, wasn't it? It says, mm. oh, why not just build a completely new Guilty. one? Guilty. 
um, uh, with a different design that's more up to date and <coughs> um, kind of new. So we discussed what we should do it with, and you came up with the idea of doing it with the Rubik's Cubes, didn't you? Yeah, because I do a lot of Rubik's Cube stuff in my show, and it's quite a nice thing to have as a conduit between... Uh, so my initial idea was to have it so if you're using Venom Cube or Rubicon, you can have your spectator using a dice and mixing up in the audience, and while they're doing that, it's a little bit... It can be a little bit sort of dead air talking about, talking about how many quintillion... Ugh, the possibilities there are. That. Well, do well exactly. But while while they're mixing the cube up, they can mix it for like three minutes while you do something else with the die that you've got. So that yeah. was that was kind of the idea. Um, so we came up with a with a dice box that that works like a dice box, but instead of using a dice, oh, it uses yeah. one of these. Um, and everybody's helped with this. I mean, Mel's done uh, all the uh, <coughs> acrylic work. I did all the cutting and helped with some of the design stuff. Jason's done a lot of the design work and the thought oh, into it. Yeah, Alex has done all the uh, the cab work and the 3D printing on it. Yeah. So yeah, it's been a big team effort all around. It has. And, um, it's very much been designed by committee. still not a finish. This is still a prototype. There's still a few little things on it. I mean, this, this, this block is... Uh, this lip isn't closing properly and these tabs are tiny bit too long. Uh, but before we do too much of a redesign, uh, we thought we'll show you guys, um, get your opinions on it. And if anyone thought this is good, but what if you did that? Or what if you did this? Or that bit's too obvious or something doesn't look right, then then we might as well get the information yeah. from you guys before we crack on with the final prototype and go to market on it. So over to Jason to uh, give a demo of what it does. Right, okay, so uh, well, we're also we're also gonna send this out, aren't we, on Monday to a, to a friend of the shop, uh, yes. Rob, who's gonna do some do some playing and, and performing with it and let us know. So yeah, if you have any thoughts, uh, pop us an email. It'll be probably easier than the than the Facebook comments because we'd read them easier. Uh, yeah, so this is what right. it is. So we um, zoomed in on you, Jace. Oh, are we? Mm. Hello. Right, right. So what we what we're gonna do? Um, what we're gonna do? What we're gonna do? Right. So this is how I perform it in a in a children's show, and it isn't it isn't necessarily you know a children's trick. It could be it could be used for anybody really. Uh, so. Inside this box, I have my, my favourite toy in the world. Do you know what my favourite toy is? I do, Jason. You do? Yep. What is it? Pokemon. No, it's not. It oh. is a Ru... Oh. It is a Ru... Oh. It's a Rubik's Cube. Oh, there we go. It is a Rubik's Cube. Now, we're going to play a game with this. It's going to be a fun game. It's going to be an amazing game. And I'm going to make this cube disappear. It's going to be a miracle. So I'm going to put the cube in the hat. And I'm going to make the cube go from the hat to the box. It is going to be absolutely fantastic. Are we ready, Alex? I'm ready. Watch closely. Dave, are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Ooh, you have to do the noise. It's very important you do the noise. And if you do the noise, you can see inside that. Da, 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 da. That is brilliant. It is fantastic. Right. The hardest bit is making it go back. Ooh, you have to do the noise. And of course, it goes back. It is fantastic. Ooh, Thank you very much. Don't believe me. Yeah, What's the problem? Much. Uh, you want to see it go, we, we, we do you? You want to see it go. You want to see it go. Okay. What we will do, I will show you it go. So we're going to take the cube. And we're going to put the cube inside the box like so. And you really can see that the cube is in the box. There it is. And we're going to make it disappear. One, two, three. And it's gone. It is completely gone. It is an absolute... It's completely gone. It is an absolute miracle. Completely gone. It is an absolute miracle. And of course, by now, you have the children going completely bananas that it's sliding from side to side. So now is the nice bit, my favorite bit. You can take the box apart and show that there is no way it can slide from side to side. And this is my favorite bit. You show the cube inside here. And with a little bit of magic, one, two, three, it drops from here over to here. It is brilliant. But that isn't the trick we were trying to do. We were trying to make it disappear completely. So here we go. On three. One, two, three. With a click, you have it disappear from here. Have it disappear from here. And it has completely gone. Whoop, whoop. And it's no longer in the box. It is back in the hat. Yay. And that is the Ruby's Cube Dice Box. There you go. So that is, uh, that's our prototype. So you stole my favourite bit. I said that was my favourite bit when you talked about it. Well, it's always been my favourite bit. No, which well, is that's why, not what you said earlier. Which is why I wanted to you do a split die box as opposed to a normal die box. Because you've got that real... And you can put that on opposite sides of the stage if you want. So it really is quite a, quite a long way that the cube seems to travel. 
What uh, I do yeah. notice on here is because it's black, because I'm kind of watching the screen, and when you hold it here, it's difficult to see well, the boxes. Because yes. of the yeah, background. exactly. So the screen wise, maybe not quite so good. Um, well, I like the idea of maybe changing. The, we, we have discussed changing the color of yeah, this and making yeah. it look more Rubik's Yeah, the we, we on discussed the using, you know, using a green, a red, a white, and, and all the different Rubik's Cube colors so that everything is like that, or just yeah. a bit more stylish. So, or maybe you can build both, because once we once you built it, it's just a case of changing the acrylic so you can get a colored one or a black one. Yep. So, a possibility. So that's that's yeah. the kind of thing guys we're looking for in terms of feedback if you know if you couldn't see any any of it on camera the other thing i came up with earlier was having some sort of design other than this wraparound so maybe just a, a big an obvious x to show there is a big wall on there that so it's so it's not sliding backwards and forwards you know make it almost um like cartoon obvious that, that, that there is a wall there yeah um yeah or maybe even having a wall graphic would be quite funny there's a wall and having it having like a little brick yeah, a yeah. brick graphic or something any ideas any comments any feedback <coughs> please do let us know if there's any moments that were flashing or looked awkward yeah all that input is valuable to us yep. if there's anything you think we should change size wise shape wise yeah we appreciate it all mm. so uh, yeah thank you everybody right okay um uh, should we get ali on you want you want do you want to have another look around for a bit longer or do you want to come on now ali he's shopping come on now. yeah shopping come on now you can well, shop after we'll anyway. uh, if you guys want to come over this side yep. um and we'll uh, ali can kind of come over here uh, and <laughs> come join us over here that way we're officially Two meters apart. Uh, you can bring your coffee, it's fine. I'll be, I'll be drinking my water, putting my water. So, oh. how are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, You're good right. to see you, mate. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, good. So, um, uh, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, um, uh, if anyone's got any questions they want to ask Ali, um, I mean, you've recently, recently done a pen and teller fool us for the second time. Mm -hmm. um, did you fool them the first time? I can't remember. I didn't fool them there. Yeah, you haven't fooled them. Yeah. We, yeah, we know you didn't do twice, the second twice. time. Twice, twice. Twice they've got me. Yeah. Did you, did you plan, if anyone wants to ask Ali any questions, you know, please do um, mm. just put your comments on here and, and we'll ask them across to you. Did you go on there with a sp specific goal of fooling them? No, no. You didn't. You just wanted to I go on there and do it. Because a lot of people use it as a kind of a showcase just to get out there. Yeah. And I, I mean, like you got. That. I think uh, Foolus, I think it's the best magic format because it's the one. If you, I mean, I've done a lot of magic formats, but it's the one that's lasted the longest because they've done what is it, seven series oh, now? Yeah, and it is quite a good idea because it's a weird mixture of reality TV and with like proper shiny floor, almost like doing a slot on like a palladium type show, really. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's why it's a really good format. But as Michael Close said, if you want to do Foolus. Just worry about having your best routine that everyone enjoys watching. Because really, what it is, it's an excuse to have a magic variety show. Yeah. And then they add on the little sort of competition element as a little bonus. Um, having said that, you know, everyone goes about it different ways. I have other mates who've done it and they're, they're totally going in there to fool them. Yes. But the big problem, as we know, in magic is if you're going with a hardcore fooler, is it necessarily commercial? And it... Because you can go on with some crazy Pharaoh Gilbraith sort of card routine, but it might be just really boring to watch. So that's the challenge. If you're going to go for a hardcore fooler, uh, uh, how do you get that to work? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I worked very closely with Noel, helping him build some products for other yes. projects and for the foolers as well. Yeah. And his goal was 100% to go on there and fool them. Yes, so, that's uh, it. Yeah. Doesn't matter how convoluted the method is, that's the goal. So yeah, it's interesting. Some, so I remember the very first episode watching James Moore go on there, and he was doing. Um, Some illusions, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, illusions. yeah, yeah. And I was yeah, thinking, yeah. well, it's not going to fool them. Why is he doing it? And then you realise, well, it's a stepping stone, isn't it? It's getting them out there. National TV people will see that, and his name's out. Yeah, well. I, I mean, I think helps. any any TV slot really. It's um, the other thing about doing TV. It's never as brilliant as everyone thinks it is. It is a bit like doing another gig. Mm. You, you know, like if you do a thirty weddings and you get to the next wedding, it's very much like every wedding, and every TV slot. It's a bit like that. It's not going to change the world, but they are still good to do because really you've got clips you can show people forever really yeah uh, but still um, it is an exciting thing to do and uh, and I have to say I think foolless is quite nerve-wracking so I think another thing if you are thinking of trying to do it don't go on there with something precarious because it's shot as live you get one stab at it the the theatre is bigger I would say it's twice the size of any West End theatre so it's like 30 metres wide, super massive, an audience of 300, 20 cameras on you. 20, 20. cameras? They have wow. 20, they have 20 <laughs> cameras 
<laughs> and that's it. You've got one go. Yeah. And that it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure for anyone. It's also a good experience it, for anyone wanting to get into stage it stuff. Is. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that kind of pressure. So yeah. I think I think so. If you want to do it, you have to go in and just think, what's the best routine I've got, really? And then and then just think, and am I comfortable with it? Because I think if you're going with like say a crazy method, but you've only done it three times. I wouldn't suggest that either because you're yeah. just going to get too nervous. It is ner- In fact, if uh, the two routines that I did on there, there's not much to do technically. There are a few bits and bobs. I mean, you helped me out. The, early on, there's a, a coin production, and I was so nervous on that. Uh, but they're really kind to magicians as well because I said to Michael Close, I said, uh, Am I flashing what, you know, the coins? And he says, look, we're filming it on 20 cameras. One of the angles will get it right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, like, that's the benefit of having that sort of, that amount of technology as well. That's good, where you, yeah. don't, you don't get that kind of help out in, in uh, a Got a Talent show, for No, example. you yeah. don't. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Russ does great work on BGT, and he's really helped magicians. But one thing to remember, if you do normal telly, without any magicians, they don't even know what a bad angle is. They, didn't, mm. they just think you're a magician. They don't realise we have bad angles. So I, I've done slots on sort of morning TV shows and stuff, and they're terrifying. That's where you have to go for something self-working because the lighting's wrong, or they they shoot it from behind you, thinking they're helping, but of course they're not. Yeah. I remember, I think uh, it was Paul Daniels was was saying that he has so much control when they're going to, if they did a live spot on TV and yeah. have all kinds of people there who want to see the angles beforehand, so much rehearsal and he wouldn't do anything on the camera unless he had complete control over it. Yeah. It, yeah which it, is difficult to do these days. Yeah. It's really hard. In, and, yeah. and also, um, I think we, as magicians, we sort of see TV as the pinnacle, whereas TV is actually really disposable. They're just filming stuff all the time. So if you get a slot on you know, one of the morning TV shows to promote something, you just have to pick something really safe, yeah. like something you've done a thousand times, because they will film it from the weirdest angle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just one of those problems. Uh, but fallers, you've got that advantage that magicians are there to help you. Yeah. Uh, I think the other thing with fallers as well is, it, it, what's great about that format is they really want something original. I mean, I remember coming in here and we were chatting about it, and you really have to... If you've had a really odd idea, like I did this trip with the snake girl, I had that idea four years ago, and at first I thought it was useless, I thought it was stupid. Then I started performing it, and I wasn't getting much out of it, but I just kept going with it until eventually, it, you know, it gets somewhere, because that's the only way to get something original, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think there's a huge price on doing something different for that show. The, yeah. the snake girl, did you get that built for that show? Uh, no, I had it built... Um, I've, I've toured it twice, oh, right. um, but it was never, I mean, when I first did it, I wanted to, I wanted to do a sideshow illusion. Yeah. And this is when you find out stuff about tricks. But the weird thing about sideshow illusions, they're not designed to get a round of applause, but you don't realize that until you, um, you start doing it. Cause you imagine you normally see a spy Dora or the snake girl, you would walk into a sideshow and you go, Oh, that's weird. Yeah. And you'd carry on. And I found that when I revealed it on, and here's a snake girl, everyone went, oh yeah. <laughs> but there's no, like, there's no applause. And then I thought, oh, well, the snake girl's got to do something. And then I, I've heard that story that Glycon, which was a real Greek god, would actually be able to read minds. It's a, it was a real cult in ancient Greece. Oh, wow. And then that, so I had that story. And then I, the first thing I thought of was just the dice prediction. And then that was all right, but not great. And then I thought, oh, it'd be perfect for a Karan's type uh, medallion prediction. Yeah. Yeah, but I tried loads of tricks. And, you know, that routine was maybe eight or nine minutes. And over time, it becomes about three, mm. you know. Yeah. Well, so if, there was, if that was in your show, would she, do, would she be more interactive or would you still just be kind of, you know, two, two main effects on it? Um... Um, I would probably do, uh, in the original, there's a, there is a couple more effects, but there's a lot more jokes. Because one of the other things, in a live show, the pressure's not the same. Whereas on Foolers, uh, anything on telly, more than five minutes is a long time. Yeah, yeah. It's a long time. So like the first slot I did on Foolers was only two minutes 20. I think that's like the ideal length. This yeah. one was about four or five minutes. So you have to have a lot going on. So obviously I've got, I've got her, I've got the dice, and then as many jokes. Yeah, like some you've good got it. You've yeah. got you've got to get the light, and then I ha- I got all my stand-up mates to help me, 
and I was like, guys, I know you don't do jokes about snakes. <laughs> but or, or virgins of Vegas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the virgin, the virgin line was um, Adam, the, yeah. Adam Bloom, uh, the comedian. He's yeah. an excellent comedian. We were sat and we had a session. And then he said, well, don't you have to sacrifice something? And then we came up with a joke. Yeah. But trust me, we tried 30 jokes. And out of those 30, those are like the three or four that stick. Yeah. yeah. That worked. It worked. Mm -hmm. were, were you the snake lady? Yes. You were. Okay. <laughs> well, it looks somewhat cool. different today as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> do they stipulate, Ali? What you do they sort of come to you and say, "We know you do kind of illusions, and they want do they want that on the show, or is it up to you to pitch to them? How does how does it work?" Yeah, it's a funny one. The, the the first I did the first ever Foolless, and that was a lot more like a normal TV show where, in normal TV, they have a team of researchers, usually girls in their twenties, yeah. who it's their job to hit the internet and try and find everyone. And they'd heard about, I think it was Noel Qualter, actually. Well, yeah, because I was interviewed as Noel's friend, because obviously yeah. they were friends to talk about them afterwards. I was interviewed for that, but obviously Noel's went wrong with the battery dying on the first day, on the first one. Because they come to the international convention, you were probably there at the time. They, yeah. came, they came there and they were interviewing everyone that knew Noel, everyone that knew so-and-so, so, -so, so they've got some, some friends to talk about his, his performance. Yeah, well, um, what happened, I think, I, I was one of the first persons to be asked, but the original format looked terrifying. It was like, uh, Penn and Teller can look at your props, they can discuss how you did it, and every, no one wanted to do the show, because we were all like, well, I don't want to go on telly and just get destroyed. Yeah. And yeah, then, yeah. Um, but then, as we got talking to them, realised it's just a bit of a format, really. And then Noel said, have you seen Ali doing the chicken and the duck? And then they came to me and they said, look, we need something big to open the show, but something weird, and, and a, we wanted an illusion that looks skillful. And, and so that one was very much like they had an idea in their mind and I fitted the bill. And then, whereas the snake girl, I did pitch that. Uh, and I, I, the only thing I do know, the reason I chose like the snake girl rather than other stuff is they love something weird. Yeah. Because their big problem is they're going to get a lot of card tricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, does, it doesn't matter how brilliant it is. Yeah, that's that, that's what you're fighting against. Yeah, I remember someone like Brian, uh, is it Brian Brushwood went on there and had the body on the stage and was rooting around in the stomach and all that. Getting, like, I mean, that's what they want, isn't it, really? They want they want some weird stuff. Well, um, if you imagine, like, every episode is a bit like you putting your own show together. Yeah. So, like, if you're doing a cabaret show, you know, you, you would be like, well, if I have six card repeat here... I'm going to have to do some sort of mind reading thing here just to break it up and yeah. then my comedy routine here. So really they're, they're taking international acts and then piecing them together. Mm. Uh, and that they tend to like, it's interesting both, I opened both shows, but both of them were quite big items. And I think they tend to do a big item, then a close up item, then a funny item, you know, just like putting a normal show together. Yeah. yeah. When, when was it filmed? Uh, it was in March. I mean, literally. Oh. So lucky then, yeah. I can't tell you the luck factor on this, yeah. on the, on this one. Firstly, um, uh, my assistant Petra, who, who uh, plays a snake girl, she's from Croatia. So we had to, to get visas for someone from Croatia to get into America. That that took ages. <laughs> it just took us ages. But we managed to do it. We got the visas three days before we flew out. Wow. And then wow. when we were there, they were like, oh, um, COVID's coming. And we're all like, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. And then about two days after we filmed it, I think, suddenly the lockdown came in mm. and we flew out of the night of the ban basically wow, that's yeah amazing so lucky yeah I mean, you couldn't really have done your show like Noel did over the um skype could you it would have been is it skype or zoom yeah, yeah they did, they've done impossible. that a bit haven't they on some of the yeah. episodes now uh, but yeah. you wouldn't have been able to do that no, item no way, no, no, way. no no they, they want that and wherever possible i think you got to think what are they lacking like if someone could go and fool us with a new illusion that would be the ultimate, yeah. because it's really hard to fool people with an illusion. So, yeah. that would be like the the, the they've done most of them. They've done most of them, yeah, yeah. But the good thing is that's not their area of expertise either. So you know, you just always got to think what what do they need the most in that show, mm. and uh, and then try. But it seems to be something a bit off the wall. The thing yeah. is, the fooling part is more for magicians than anyone it is. else, because a lot yeah. of people aren't watching it to see who fools on their scene, it's to watch magic. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And it, it, yeah. It's almost like the old Paul Daniels Magic Show, where the best thing about the Paul Daniels Magic Show was it was into individual snippets of performers at the top of the game from anywhere around the world. You yeah. know? It wasn't, it's like a, you know, Dynamo, we all have Dynamo, but Dynamo struggles to get 
that much material, you know, constantly just him doing all this stuff. And as good as it is, it's never going to be as good as somebody who's got a five minute act that they worked on for 20 years. Yeah. And to yeah. have, you know, 10 of those acts throughout a whole evening, it, it was fantastic. You know, yeah. it was all FISM quality acts throughout the show and Paul Daniels just did the um, the, the bit in between really so yeah yeah that, that was that thing everyone forget uh, on Paul Daniels you know when the first time they had the bubble guy on yes and it was yeah. like a, that was like the whole country talked about it yeah I mean yeah. there was only you know there was only three channels anyway but the whole country was like who was that guy and uh, that that is the problem whenever you do your own series uh when we did Monkey Magic it was 17 tricks an episode I remember I and, there was, there, and there was four of us and still, it's still like, you are learning. I remember I learned the torn and restored cigarette paper. I started at midnight, I got up at five, and by nine I was shooting it. Whoa. And, it, and oh. uh, that, that's that we, if you get, people always think, oh, they're dreamy to get a TV series. But it's like, if you get one, <laughs> just it's like strop in, because that's the reality. Yeah. You haven't got enough time for muscle memory to kick in, so it's all just got to be natural skill and ability that you picked up over the years doing Yeah, that I mean, there's a lot to be by. said for being pretty good at all areas of magic. Mm. You know, if you, if you get onto telly, uh, that, that's a real skill. You've got to be able to do a bit of illusions, a bit of mind reading, a lot of close up because it's the cheapest, yeah. and uh, you know, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Right, let's see if there's any questions from any of the uh, viewers. So we're going to skip across everybody at the moment and see what's going on. So, um, <clears throat> uh, what I would say, um, Jason, do you want to get on the computer and just see, have a look through here, see if there are any comments rather than me sitting there looking through them yep. all? Do you want to mm. see if there's any little questions and you can put them uh, yeah, yeah. Right across? So, um, don't see any at the moment. Uh, what you were saying earlier about, um, <clears throat> excuse me. If you're going to go on somewhere like Fall Us, make sure that what you do is stuff you do well and know inside and out. You don't yeah. want to just create something for the day um, unless you've got two years to practice or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's very much the same. We get a lot of people come in the shop who are going to go for the magic circle exam. And they yeah. come in, they say, right, I'm going for my magic circle exam. I want to find something really good that will fool them and really impress them. And I say, well, hang on a minute, you know, why do you do magic already? Yeah, I do this, this, and this. So why? Get something new for the you know they're not looking to be fooled or baffled mm. they want to see you a competent magician yeah so absolutely. go back whatever you do whether that's an ambitious routine or whatever just do that routine and if you want to make it a little bit more original put an original script or, or patter to it but don't change what you know so well and try and come yeah. up with something and be clever because those people who try and be clever when nerves hit that's it boom. that's it yeah yeah when the shakes start and you're not really ready to it you know i think i think one of the th hardest things about magic really is uh, and i've seen it happen with real top I've seen some of the top sleight of hand guys go on foolless and their hands are like this. Mm -hmm. And these are guys that are, are like magic heroes, but they are not used to being on a stage that big. Yeah. They're used to doing a lecture. Uh, and when I did the magic circle exam, my dad always said, they just want to know that you love magic mm -hmm. and that you're into it and they want you to do well. Yeah. Uh, but I always say this to, uh, well, someone came to me and they said, this is my audition act. He had developed like a character he was doing it like silent comedy. And I said, have you studied acting? No. Have you studied physical comedy? No. I was like, right, those are harder than magic. I was like, just just get your tricks right first. Just, just do that as yeah. you. And then choose the three tricks that you've done forever. Because yeah. it's just about, you cannot fake feeling comfortable. And that, that's the most important thing. If I ever do a show, I always open with uh, Invisible Deck. And, it, and it's so it's so easy, so boring. Every magician does it. But I do it, and I've done it my whole career, because for the first five minutes, I'm just relaxing. Mm. And then I don't even attempt anything until I feel all right. And I also, um, particularly if I do like a longer show, like in Edinburgh, I do have a complicated sort of close-up bit. But it's like 40 minutes in, by which time, you know, you, you yeah, all your nerves the shakes have gone. Are gone yeah. But that yeah. that but that happened on purpose because if I if I opened and I had to do like and I don't even mean super advanced stuff, but I mean if you just if you open with a hard palming routine, that's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of pressure, you know. Well, a lot of people come in and say they've got their first gig and they're really paranoid about it and they know they're gonna shake or they've had one before and they're shaking and, and I've just said, Well, get an effect, something that's very simple, requires no slides, something like full plus. Yeah. Full plus you can do in your sleep, it doesn't require any slides, the only 
difficult thing is your presentation. And yeah. As long as you know that, you're fine. So, you know, just go out, open with that. By the time everyone's seen that, clapped and had a laugh and gone, wow, your shakes would have gone. You can crack on and do something more advanced. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and all of the real workers, when I used to do a lot of close up, I, I was in the north of England. Uh, so, like, they all know that it's all about the plot. It doesn't, um, I think in magic, when you first get into magic, you think you have to be technically brilliant. But the truth is, it's the plot. And uh, I used to do a lot of shows with Sean McCree. And he used to do the finger guillotine, and he had all the jokes, all the lines. He could do, he can do anything with a deck of cards, yeah. but he, or he used to close on that, and it was yeah. a miracle. And I think just, particularly with Close Up, it's all about the scripts, and it's all about having a laugh, really, you know. Yeah. As people and magicians have been saying for years, you know, you're an entertainer first and foremost, you know, the magic comes second, but nowadays, so many people get into magic just to show off, just to yeah. say, look how good I am, and they forget all about the entertainment. It's just about the trick. Well, I mean, I used to be, I think it's just because when you first get in magic, you think, if I can do this and others can't, then I must be better. Well, you'll be better technically, but you won't be necessarily better as a performer. And then, and it really, and it took me a long, I was very nervous as a performer. Um, I remember doing three card Monty for this couple I'd been babysitting with. Uh, uh, and I remember my hands were like this. I couldn't do it, you know, even though I'd practiced it over and over. And th and the confidence comes from putting yourself on the line and just doing it over, you know, and, and Copperfield used to say, do as many shows as you can for anyone you can. Yeah. And with the same three or four tricks, uh, I had lessons from Pat Page. He taught me his sponge balls. I used to do that for years. And he taught me his uh, chocolate routine which was literally once the balls reappeared once bang he went for the load like because yeah. you you know you're at a big banquet table you've Small only got a attention. few minutes yeah yeah, Small attention span. yeah. Awesome. so um yeah the we covered a lot of the questions just in the chat i mean naturally mm. but somebody said ali your coin production was was great on the show they thought it was really simple really elegant and it but it looked really really good and that was what Dave Howard wasn't it? The it was, yeah, would be, yes. Uh, the, the, and um, the sort of main question, really, that we haven't covered is in all your experience of buying electronic magic, because obviously <laughs> I've seen some of your some of your shows. Is there a company that really stands out to you as being the best, or what? what what's your opinion of it? Because because I have quite a lot of electrics in my show, and I'm constantly worried yeah. that one's going to interfere with another. Or do you know yeah. what I mean? Is, yeah. Well, I I've got a bit of stuff from everyone. Yeah. And. Uh, all the usual suspects, you know, uh, Labco and, um, oh, gosh, the guy who does the, the dice. Um, um, I'm not going to on Pro Mystic, that kind of thing. Uh, Pro Mystic, yeah. yeah. All, the, all the usual guy. I find that, um, in my experience, the technology is pretty good nowadays. Yeah, yeah. I've never had anything go wrong except for a pad once. And it was in a show, I was doing 28 shows, and in one show it went wrong. But you really do want to set up and out if you can. Yeah. And so the what I did on that particular show is uh, I would say write down the information on the pad. Uh, uh, so it was some numbers. And I had my stage, you know, the backstage guy who was doing all the dirty work. He would walk on with a pen if something went wrong. And right. one night mm -hmm. he would walk on with a pen. He goes, there you go, Ali. And that was the code. That's great though. That's yeah. really that's really important information mm. because, you know, obviously some people that are, you know, if I'm doing a, a kids' magic show in a village hall, I might not necessarily have that luxury of having somebody go having a, yeah. having a queue. But that is nice to think. Do you know what? If the battery runs out or if something happens, well, I've got a. I mean, a for a prediction for a prediction effect, and you will want to and you want to go electronic. I would definitely, if you know it's not working, I would have some sort of line where you would go. Okay, so you've burned the image on your mind of whatever it is. And now, just so everyone else knows, and that's when you're into, they are revealing it, but hopefully your prediction is still pretty isolated and yeah, pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, that, that's the way to get around it. Where So the, the a trick is not as good as it was, and you know it's not, but it's still a trick. Yeah. Yeah. You've, you've lost 30% of amazement, but only 30%. Yeah, and they don't know, do they? I they mean, don't know, no. It's like no. very much... Yeah, with music, I like if you mess up, you carry on, and most people don't even realise you've messed up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that, um, I was chatting to my assistant, Petra, she's a professional dancer, and um, she did a thing on the X Factor, and she had to wear this visor, and it fell off right. midway through. 
and and then he, she just turned around and carried on as though it was meant to. <laughs> and people, yeah, they, they don't really know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is the one beauty of, uh, you know, the old rule in magic of don't tell them until you've done it. <laughs> that, that that's the, one of the best reasons not to tell them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Script changes is going along. Uh, Adam Evans says, uh, "Hi, uh, Ali. Is there a f sorry? There is a four coins across. I'm working on. I've seen you do the bit. I'm struggling. Is the clip any advice?" Hi, Ali. There is a four coin across. I'm working on. I've seen you do it. The bit I'm struggling is the is the clip. So uh, do you do a coin? Do you do a four coins? Have seen you do a four coins across routine somewhere? Maybe on. That's what I think. That's what he's saying. And it, it, there's a there's a section of it that he's struggling with. Okay. Sense? I mean, if I knew which routine it was, uh, I don't know whether it, I recently posted a wild coin. I didn't know whether it was that routine, but that was a wild coin rather than a coins across. Right. I could show you. Uh, if we're allowed to show you the moves or whatever, um, if you could let me know, it's Adam, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Let, let's know, Adam. Uh, yeah, if uh, you can let us know us, yeah. what, what the move is, I could tell you. Um, do you get to go for a few beers with Penn and Teller? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Do you, know, do you, you, get to see you, you know what's really depressing about Fool Us is <laughs> it is a factory of magic. Yeah. I arrived at nine in the morning as Hans Clock was walking off stage. <laughs> So he's already been on at 9 a.m. And also I was like, oh my God, Hans Clock's on. <laughs> and um, you don't really see anyone. You turn up, you start filming, you know, the VT bit. Yeah. That VT bit lasts, what, 50 seconds, but you film for about eight hours. Wow. So they just want to get the best they can. And it's just a non-stop factory. You can't believe the turnover. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, Teller came backstage after my bit and had a little chat with us and he said he really enjoyed it, which is really sweet. But the truth of it is, is, you know, time is money and all that kick they've got, they just have to keep filming and filming and yeah, filming. Course, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, uh, Gordon Drayson says, uh, hello Gordon. Uh, he says, I remember watching Ali's entrance exam for TMC and it was great. It was also very original. Oh. There you go. Right, Cheers, you Gordon. Comments? When was that? Checked in the post. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that was a long time ago. Gosh, maybe 15, 20 years ago. But at the time, I mean, the one thing I would also say for anyone, you must get people entering the Magic Circle, is yeah. you're doing a formal close up show. So you're not doing table hopping. You are going to be sat at a table or stood at a table with a mini audience. So really, you're doing a parlour act. Yeah. So you need to practice like that. And, and Richard McDougall used to have a great idea, which was. You have your table set up, and you would have. He used to put um, beer bottles in four parts of his bedroom, and as he was performing, he would look to this one, then he would look to that one, yeah. then he would look to that, and it just gets you away from always looking at your hands. Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah, I saw a nice thing with Zoom shows where they say put an actual face of a loved one on the camera, so you're actually talking to them. So, uh, so you're chatting to your wife, or you're chatting to your yes. mom, or you know, so you're actually looking up at them because I. I find even looking at the camera here. No, that no. You need to remember yeah. to, to. I mean, I'm up. I'm Zoom so so like, oh my god. <laughs> I feel sorry for the people who've booked me, but I have to do them. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we'll we'll cut that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Tingley says, uh, Ali, did the show pay for your expenses? Uh, they do on Fullless. Yes, they do. They, oh. they do pay for expenses. Yeah. And Don, hello, Don. Uh, Don says, um, absolutely fascinating insight into the world of TV and need to get on. S need to get on so this is godsend of watch thanks guys <laughs> let the spell done <laughs> syntax is important yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, but how can how can someone apply for it ali if they do want to go on yeah so is the, it, is there is a picture? there is an email right. um which is uh i think it's uh something like application at foolers.com right it's on michael close's uh facebook page um i i've been following his facebook page he's a He's one of those guys who's read every book and been everywhere and met everyone. And uh, I think it's a pretty good page, but the, I know the uh, there's a post on there. They've just opened it up for the new season. Right. But it's a big show. They've only just stopped finished. They've only just finished filming the last season. Yeah. There's a lot of acts on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ali says, are you still a massive Derek Dingle fan? <laughs> That's Paul Sunderland. <laughs> uh, I am a massive Derek Dingle sorry, fan. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. Yes, you are. Um, uh, Ali Cook's on everything this week, said Nick. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Nigel Quinn says Ali's Pen and Teller Act was great, a mix of classic and modern magic. How long had the yak been in the making? But we covered that already. Uh, a lot of Welsh on the top shelf, Dave. What a Welsh. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, this is an excellent book. So if questions. anyone can get the, uh, this David Reed, I'm, I'm pl plugging your books now, but that's an amazing <laughs> You don't book. need to worry, Alex, Alex is well on the plug. <laughs> um, uh, Roy Brandis says, where are the two Smurfs this week? <laughs> They're behind the camera, uh, Roy, you're joining late. Uh, just a bit of social distancing between me and Ali. Uh, Paul Ruffin's on, buddy! How are you doing? Are you back in the UK, mate? You're still over there. Uh, he says, Good morning, guys. Ali was great on a, was a great guest on my Magic Of podcast. Talks about putting a show together, amongst other things. Uh, right, Adam Evans has come back about the coins. He says, it's the four coins across, using four coins and a turtle. You put four coins in a line. You put your hand over the four coins to move the... Oh, to move title, down. To move the title down. Not a turtle then, it's a turtle. It must be the, it must be the turtle, turtle, yeah. Turtle, yeah, down to a steel coin. Uh, the clip of when sterling turtle I flash between fingers. Oh, oh okay, I can tell it. I know exactly he's, what he's he's talking about. You're typing too fast or you're dictating. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, speaking Adam, in code like Pen and Teller. Yeah. He is speaking yeah. in Pen and Teller yeah. code. I love yeah. the use of the word turtle. Uh, so, Adam, <laughs> it is uh, that routine is uh, Dean Dills, and it's on his two DVD set. And it's a John Kennedy routine that he extended. So it's um, four coins in a row here, and one by one they jump from this hand to this hand, but then you get like an explosion effect at the end. Is that um, translocation? It's, tra it's a translocation variation, and it's on the, the you know, the two classic yeah. Dean Dill sets. And I learnt it from there. In terms of uh, unmasking with the shell, um, I just did the standard front palm clip have you got a, a big coin yeah, at all um and i, I but i'll tell you a little the trick tur the turtle alley not, not the, shell. the sorry the <laughs> turtle um but in terms of all i did was the classic front palm like this you this was with half dollars i was just doing that but one little thing we did do that we discovered on quite a few things on the secret world of magic was if you get some repositional spray some spray mount and just spray it on your fingers, it makes doing things like this a tad easier because the coin sticks a bit to the middle two fingers but not enough that it gets stuck. A bit like palm, didn't they have palm Yes, stuff, same sort of thing, yeah. yeah. The but only thing better. is it, it can be a hassle, yeah. you know, whereabouts it's, it's yeah. in your act, you know. But um, that, that I found for things like, if you have to do these kind of moves, if it kind of sticks and then you can grip it, yeah. then you get less movement. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, quick question for me. Um, uh, when you did Monkey Magic um, with Pete um, uh, Jonathan and um, Big um, Pete, oh yeah, Big Pete. Pete yeah. yeah. How, did you guys know each other beforehand? No. Or were you all kind of chosen individually to come in and do that? Uh, we were. Uh, uh, me and um, Pete Firm became very good mates, and uh, he was my flatmate for three or four years. Oh, okay. uh, but no, uh, I think Darren knew Jonathan. And, right. and then Jonathan, but it was uh, then he auditioned for it. Big Pete auditioned for it. I think he knew Anthony Owen, and then Pete uh, auditioned for it, and I auditioned for it. Oh, okay. It, it really was. I mean, that's a, an example of you don't know what they quite are looking for, mm. but they wanted four people who looked completely different. And the right age group as well. A like age group. Style, that, yeah. that, that's one yeah. of the things that you often get because uh, telly's obviously so visual that you instantly need to go, oh, it's him. And like Jonathan only wore black, for example. Yeah. So it's like, oh, it's the guy who wears black. Like instantly, you just knew straight away. Yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome, awesome. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. Did the last recorded episodes of Monkey Magic ever air? I filmed a bunny production with you, but I never saw it, says Gordon. Um, I'm not fully sure, Gordon. Uh, I know there was a Christmas special, um, but I wouldn't... What happens when you shoot stuff like that? Um, a little bit like with Foolless. So uh, I shot with some magicians who weren't in my episode. Everything gets moved around and chopped up accordingly. So unfortunately, I, I mean, I, I, I remember Gordon being there on set one day, but for the life of me, I, I can't remember what, what episode it was in or whether it was in the special. And uh, Paul Sunderland says to Ali, congratulations on your recent awards for Cunning Man. Oh yeah, that's a short film that I. Uh, oh, um, so. Yeah, that's a different thing. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's a, an act. I made a short film about magic, but 
it's just an acting uh, short film. Is that available to, uh, to watch anywhere? Uh, I can send you the trailer, but it goes around the festivals. Uh, oh, I see. Right, and then okay. you're not allowed to put it online until right. until they've all finished. Okay, yeah. well, when it's finished, maybe you can post it up. So. Yeah, I'll let you know. Yeah. You go. Right, okay, I suppose we're all done. Um, better go on with the show, five o'clock. We've got half an hour to go for the rest of the stuff. Before we go any further, um, can you pick two cards for us? Yes. Uh, this will be used in our giveaways later. We always do a giveaway every okay. week. And we have random cards chosen. So make sure it's a... Uh, uh, so um, yeah, just uh, push two cards forward. We won't look at them or anything until uh, the end of the show, and then perfect. So no one's going to know what these are. They will stay down here until the end of the show, and the card somebody now. will win a prize. There we go. Yeah, the card oracle. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely. Uh, awesome. Well, thanks for coming on, Ali. Yeah, Anything else you wanted to say to the cameras before we go? No. Uh, uh, for thanks guys, for having me on, you? guys. Yeah. Cheers. Awesome. Right. Well. Um, <laughs> See you again, mate. And um, are you used to hang around till afterwards and have a chat. About I am. I'm gonna yeah. buy a load of stuff I don't right, need. No uh, that's what I'm always gonna do. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. You're not a customer in the shop because we're not open to customers. You were just oh, here to talk like business. You, there you we go. Can click no, and no, yes. Then, go outside the front door. Order, order click and click. Then come in and click. Yeah. There okay. we go. Right. So um, yeah. Um, I think as long as these guys are two meters away from us, um, the other side of the shop, we should be all right with the uh, mask for a little while. Okay. So, um, uh, and of course, you can relax yours over there as long as you're kind of yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Right, let's go back to the earlier part. So, uh, uh, yeah, I think we had some comments about the uh, the die box, which was oh, okay. Let's uh, go back up there. Then. So it's kind of a, a, an awkward format sometimes doing this live. Uh, so. Um, I think you've gone well up, yeah. But go down to where Finley's making like the comments, you see, so we can see what we've done. Um, right, uh, boxes around faces, done all that. Um, why yeah. have you got camera to... Oh, much further down, that. much further down. You need to see Finley's big one, uh, big message. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> um, all, all my friends call me Piggy G, says George. <laughs> uh, morning, uh, Andy Ray. Uh, Richard Furzer says, uh, can morning. you recommend a stocking fill, a trick, for 15 quid for a 10-year-old beginner? Um, how much uh, I would recommend some of these. Um, uh, I can't remember exactly how much they are, but the uh, oh, the Socko Magics. Socko Magics, they're, they're ideal. Oh yeah, especially when they got things like the old um, what's the old pair of hot rods and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. Got some good stuff in there. Balling vase. For Christmas, for beginners, these are perfect. Loads of little things in there, and once he gets uh, used to some of these, he can move on. But there's some really good stuff on there. So uh, yeah. Thumb tips, wands, ball and vases, finger choppers, 101 tricks. You can't, for value for money, there's no way you can. Oh, yeah, you'd you get one that. thing. Absolutely. You'd get yeah. one thing you can't for 15. Be that. But nothing. if you were going to buy one thing, what would you buy for what if you wanted one thing? How much for is a complete beginner? Well, for a complete beginner that age. For a complete beginner. Yeah, a complete beginner at that age. I like the lights. Uh, I like the Prisma lights. For a 10, ten year old, wouldn't be ideal for that. Um, so I, I, I would say, if, you want, if you're serious about it, get him uh, a simple book. Wow. Sponge balls are okay, but then he's got to have oh, a. What about uh, yeah, Royal Road or something? Yeah. So, yeah, a book, Royal Road or Bobo, or get him something like uh, 101 Trips with a Thumb Tip and get him a junior thumb tip. And then maybe buy a couple of little silks to go with it, yeah. or a silk um, blendo. Good uh, idea. Yeah, silk blendo is an ideal thing. Uh, or go to our, our section on kids' beginners tricks. So, uh, if you look at the bottom of the homepage, the category <coughs> says kids' beginners. They're all very simple little tricks in there that cost you know, three or four pounds each, uh, like the disappearing card case, yeah. or the, uh, the penetration effect, or the. Um, uh, the finger rising, choppers, yeah, that finger, kind of yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and have a look in there. Some ideal things. I hope that helps, Richard. Uh, I love Dave's masters, George. Uh, thank you, uh, George. It was a, a prototype one. Um, this says prop bob in it, so um, uh, so people can see. Um, there we are. That's my one. Oops, there's a camera over there. Yeah. Uh, We've got 20 cameras filming us as well. Uh. <laughs> Whenever I, I, I walk out and get, uh, into a shop, someone says, "Oh, do you run a dog parlour?" Um, <laughs> it's yet. my birthday tomorrow and I'm out of isolation. Woohoo! Uh, says Finley. Yay! Uh, Graham Thomas says, uh, Greetings from Cyprus. I'm looking for a new trick to start my, uh, to start my set. Suggestions, please. Ooh. Ooh. New tricks. The, the thing is, we don't know what you've got, uh, Graham, and we don't know what your style is, whether you're a comedy, a serious, mentalism, all that kind of stuff, so it's very difficult to tell over the, uh, over the, your, your the live show. Your life show, your open is really important. That establishes your whole yeah. personality right from the start. Best so, thing to do I is drop us an email, tell us a bit about you and your act, and we'll see if we can help you recommend Check something. out Bill Abbott's um, five-card opener and box. That's very good. Uh, loving the hive is legs, Alex, says Andy oh, Ray. Just <laughs> for you, Andy. They're just yeah. for you. We had a notice. You haven't seen the pants. <laughs> Uh, Alex, your mask matches your Vespa. Um, oh. Alex's oh, ex Vespa. Oh, Somebody you've done it now. Somebody stole his Vespa. Somebody nicked it. Saturday yeah. night, Sunday morning, Alex came in, 
is Paul or Vespa are gone. So we're and trying... when did I cancel the insurance for the Vespa? On Friday. Friday. <laughs> Unbelievable, yeah. So um, I think it was the guys who saw my catalytic converter. Really, yeah. they saw that. Thought I'll come back for that later when it's quiet. But we're trying to get the CCTV footage. But gutted. Why didn't uh, they nick yeah. the boat? Yeah, because <laughs> the boat isn't insured yet, is it? No, that's there true. There we go. So uh, that's why. That's a good yeah. reason. Andy Tinkley says, uh, "Row, row, row your boat gently yeah. down the Thames, merrily, yeah. merrily, yeah. Alex, Alex and his friends." friends. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Adam Smith says, "Hi guys, hope you're all well. Still waiting for the app to be delivered. For the app to be delivered." Yeah, yeah, the card. Oh, the cop. Oh, you, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, you've got so the code, though, haven't you, Adam? I, I hope you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nigel says, uh, Theory 11 has just released some very cool-looking James Bond-themed playing cards. The license yes, they have. That's true. Wow. Um, uh, didn't they do the Star Wars? They did, yeah. They're getting all the licenses in green. We, now, can, we yeah. can probably add some of those onto our order, Dave, if we can go above the budget, because John hasn't got back to me yet. Okay. they're on Thanksgiving over there, aren't right. they? Well, uh, Otto yeah. has just made a very good point. 15% off the gift cards. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, good point. So not quite everything in the shop. But every physical product. Gift cards aren't in the shop, yes, are they? Yes, they're not a product. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Adam Heller says, oh, wow, that's great. Uh, Charlie Robinson, uh, you know what day it is? It's Poets Day, Charlie. Uh, Andy Tingley says, laugh out loud. Charlie says, uh, how do we get the 15% off? Uh, well, it's not for today, Charlie. It's going to be for Christmas. most likely Christmas Eve and Boxing Day. Um, so that I get to spend all Christmas Day um, packing up your orders. Um, yeah. uh, did we have a phone call earlier from somebody who was going to pop in? Did they not going to pop in earlier? Uh, I don't know. I did email so, so, back. Oh, okay. Right. Sounds yeah, like a yeah, set no for a joke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is it Father Christmas? It kind of is. Yeah. Yes. Is it Jimmy Taylor again? <laughs> uh, Walter McGoon says, uh, your prices are better than Black Fridays anyway. Well, thank you, Thanks, Walter. Walter. We do our best. Put the prices Happy up. Thanksgiving. Put the prices, put the prices, put the prices as well. <laughs> yeah, make sure you put the prices up 1% for yeah. each day between now and Christmas Day. <laughs> uh, Pete Donnelly, hello, buddy. I hope all is well. He says, I know you're social distancing when the shop is back open, but will you still get a cup of tea if I come in Friday? Pete, of course you will, mate. Um, I'll take you out to dinner, mate, if you want. Um, Don says, um, uh, is Very that generous. top dog, my... oh, Pizza, mate. Okay, fine. He's, he's ex-service. Yeah, yeah, no, he is, no. I'm ex-service and he's still serving. Yeah, we're, 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 like, we're brothers, you know, brotherhood. Brothers in yeah, arms. Yeah. Um, and he, he might look after me if I if I well, do a service. Now. I'm about to say servants yeah. need to kick them working here, but uh, I And Pete might be <laughs> one of the, the people who might look after me if I got on a certain oh, TV okay. show oh, at some okay. point next okay. year. Okay. Oh, okay. So, uh, Don date. says, um, uh, is, uh, is that prop dog mask you're wearing, Dave? How much? Uh, not for sale, Don. Uh, well, I guess we could make them if people I mean, mate, yeah. people yeah. wanted a spoon with your signature on it. I know. People will buy yeah. anything. Yeah. Um, Nigel says, uh, could we please have a demo and review of Hip Hop Rabbits from Alex Bees? No. No. But we can have one from Jason. Oh. Alex can do the review, Jason can do the gem. So Hip Hop Rabbits came in today. Right. I mean, we I'm... only got one set because we're a bit worried about them for, um, for price Why reasons. Why would we be worried about them, mate? Because oh, they're blimey. a little bit bloody expensive for what they, they are. are. They are and guess what? They are fun. They're good. Um, they're right, I'll try and do this expensive. for you. So, uh... <laughs> hey! <laughs> And you can, and you basically work them like boop, D lights, so you can go. Dun, da, 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 dun, 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 da, da. Can I grab one? Go on then. Oh right, that's not that easy, but yeah. Right. So if you want to, the way I, the way I use them, the way I use them is is to come over and put it in your pocket and it come back. And the, I think the kids would yeah. go mad for that. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I think they're really fun. You know, I. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Um, yeah, they're a bit of fun, aren't they? They're I think sweet. they're great. I, I think they're absolutely brilliant. I can imagine loads of kids entertainers having so much fun with that. The bad price is the bloody price. Well, I could I could do my run rabbit run, finish with the rabbit in my pocket, put him away, and come back and and pop up again. Yeah. And I just think that's really funny. Um, it's not that hard to do. It's it's a little bit it's a little bit knacky to get the timing right, but. Other than that, well, I think they're hilarious. Boing. So the right audience, um, really I fun. can think of some adult versions of it too, which would be really good. Oh, it'd be so good, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's the it's thing. The price, they're thirty. Twenty nine, twenty nine ninety nine, guys. 20, for two bits of plastic. But now, they're three D printed, so I know that's about three or four pence each from three D printing material and a sticker to go on top. That's about seven pence, maybe fourteen p for the two of them, and they're twenty nine ninety nine. I mean, come on. People will buy them though because. It's, it's something new for kids ridiculous. and nothing new comes out really. It's ridiculous. Um, I mean, if they were sold in 1990, oh, sorry, 9 I'd get 50 of them in. Of course you would, I'd yeah. dem them to everybody in the yeah, shop. Yeah. I'm not going to dem that in the shop. Someone well, that, comes in. That's the perfect kids beginner trick if it was a third of the price. 
Yeah, if somebody comes that's in hilarious. and says, uh, oh, what are they? Can you damn it? Oh, damn it. Like, oh, that's brilliant. How much are do they? they? I'm going to be so embarrassed to tell them a 30 quid. They're going to think I'm trying to rip them off and I'm pulling their leg. Do they Do they give it's... you any routines with them of any um, the, stature the instructional... that you sort of think, okay, the oh, instructional that's video, quid, actually that's a brilliant routine. The instructional video is 10 minutes long and it's, oh. I think, it, what's the guy's name? Is it Sean J? Have I got that? Have I made that up? You're have to make it up because it's not on there, Jason. Sean, Sean J, I know. think it's Sean J. Sorry if sorry if I got that wrong. Uh, Sean, whatever you. your name is. Um, it is Sean Sean J and Utility Gaffs. There we yeah. go. So uh, yeah, so the thing about the the thing about the video is it's very close to Sean's face. Like it is literally like I've got a camera here, right. and he's got these two actual rabbits on the table with him. It's a bit it's a little bit weird, but he does at one point say. Uh, people might think that they're getting two plastic rabbits, but really they're getting a lot more than that. And he does go into some of the ideas. He goes into a nice thing where you take the rabbit and produce something else instead. So you can have the rabbit, it turns into a sweet or a fan of cards or something. So there are routines, but bear in mind it's only it's only 10 minutes long. He teaches all the angles you need to learn. The move, so not that when really he says, move. bear in mind, you're not getting just ten, two bits of plastic, you're getting four or two. Is he telling the truth or has he exaggerated get, you, his I mean, extra worth a bit? I wouldn't even, I, I only bothered to watch it because I knew I'd have to talk about it. I wouldn't even bother with the video. I mean, it's that. You, you, don't you know, need you know what you're doing. Come up with your own presentation for it. To add As an add-on for Run Rabbit Run, I think it's brilliant. And I'd only ever use one of them. I really like the idea of just coming up and just doing that with the kids not seeing and... Oh, yeah. stop it. There are um, routines that I'll be happy to pay 30 quid for. That is, is definitely not something you want to pay 30 no. quid for. Because, I, 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 as I said, I can't damn that in the shop. But for the kids the kids on Zoom... But you know when you yeah. see, so like Turbo Stick is obviously a piece of acrylic um, and that's it. How much is that though? But the routine... Yeah, but the routine is really, really good. Yeah. yeah. And it's, and it's cheaper really, than that. Really good. It's cheaper than that. And it's cheaper than that. Yeah. I like so that's that. where I struggle with it. Um, yeah. plus, I'm, plus, I'm quite tempted to go around looking for some novelty bottle openers. I think you might be able to do it with novelty bottle openers or something like that. Mm. A bit of fun. But anyway. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Not, I mean, nice idea. Yeah. So nice idea. That is hibbity hop hop hip hop rabbits. <clears> um, right. Move on. Gary Simpson says, Hi guys, uh, do you have any artisan cups and balls by TCC tucked away anywhere? Or would you know if there are any plans for TCC to re reproduce them? Uh, in the future, I should have bought I'd, them the first time round. Yeah. I hadn't realised they'd gone. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think they've gone. Yeah. Um, have we got any? No, I can't see them. They'd be up there, wouldn't they? No. We uh, we still like the PFD ones, though, don't we? Are the artisan ones being discontinued. Then I don't know. I don't know. We'll look into it. We'll look into it. Gary, the PFDs you know. are really nice. A really Can nice like alternative. Um, yeah. Wouldn't you agree, Dave? Because you've got the option oh, of the top I, I love, as well. I love the PFD ones, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we we did a comparison of them uh, a few yeah, uh, yeah, months yeah, ago well, in the shop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're very good. Excuse me. Uh, Jonas says, uh, "Me English might not be as good, but I speak perfect drunken e." And I would, s and I said, uh, "You wouldn't believe me." <laughs> uh, Shane McDermott much says, "Hi boys, what's up? Stay what well, up? guys." Uh, Nigel Quinn, I don't believe TCC are making any of the original A cab yet. They have just released their new Arsan cups and balls in the latest Kickstarter, which look great. Oh, thanks for that, Nigel. Nigel is another one. He's on Kickstarter. I don't know he's why can't a, people just invest in people making just their own out. products? Why yeah, it's it's seem weird. Too, seems... too, too tight. They don't have enough confidence in their product, maybe to get a bank loan to start it all really off. Really weird. Yeah. Mm. Um, thanks for that, Nigel Quinn uh, says Gary. Um, hello guys, hope all is well. Says Andy Corrigan. Uh, hello Andrew. Uh, George says, how much will that cost? Uh, what George? Uh, that was a long time ago. You probably the comment, die so. box now. Um, the uh, right, box. yeah, die box. We don't know. We haven't worked out George, yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really nice how it splits. Says uh, Jolson Etheridge. Andy Ray says uh, Rubik's die box. Different colour inside the box. The box is too black. Yeah. Uh, thank I, you for I the feedback on that. that. Yeah. Uh, Zacha Black says, uh, can you do it with a mixed up cube? Yeah. So that then you can do a one handed solve. Uh, oh, yeah. Zach, don't start yeah. Jason on it. Don't yeah. start so, Jason. So the whole don't the whole pre Jason the whole idea was that it can be worked with any oh. Rubik's cube routine you do, whether it be Venom Cube, whether it be something from Brundage or Carl Hein and John George, it can be done with anything. You can have it mixed. You're going to receive the stickers with it, so you can you can decorate the necessary. You can decorate the turtles. Um, however, you'd like to decorate the turtles, but don't forget the terrapins. Okay, uh, that's really cool. I love the idea of the die box with Richard Furza. Don Nerfel says that's very clever. Rob Jane says they're really looking forward to working with a cube box prototype, guys. Yep. We'll update you on how it performs. Thanks for the opportunity to test it out. You're very welcome. Um, you're most welcome, Rob. Uh, well, he says to test out a prop dog original. Mm. Uh, I think the black is a good contrast to the die, uh, yeah. sorry, to the cube inside. Says yeah, I like that as well. Uh, yeah. Sandy Wilson says die box looks good. Uh, thinking about my own kid stuff. If it's shiny black, it's going to get scuffed the hell on my box. Could it be a matte rather than shiny? 
Yeah, good um, point. It's a good point. We can get matte acrylic. Yeah, we can get it. It might be a little bit more expensive. It's a good point. Well, maybe we put it in a bag or something. Yeah. Because that is one thing I hadn't considered. But it yeah, will, it okay. will no, slide no, around. Good point. I mean, I think even matte acrylic will still get scratched anyway. Uh, it's just a case of what it would look like. Yeah. Um, we'll have to put it into a little um, velvet drawstring, drawstring yeah. bag to carry it around in. Uh, Zach says, uh, instead of black, can each side be the same color scheme as a Rubik's Cube? Yeah, that's what we discussed at the beginning, uh, Zach, when we were first showing it. We were saying that we yeah. can do different colors and we might do two versions. Uh, what a great idea with the die boxes, Adam Evans. Utilizing a Rubik's Cube, as I always not been keen on die box, but will defo up one of you guys. Well, I, it was my thing as well. I, I never really understood it why there was a massive dice um, or die. I never say die. Um, uh, yeah, and that was really the reason for it because it just seemed strange. Otto R says the cube itself could pop against the colour of the boxes. In my honest opinion, maybe not use a solved cube and have matching unsolved sides peeping through the window of the box. Yeah, that's your choice. Yeah, yeah. that's that's what we're going to do. Uh, Paul says, uh, what about lift up doors at the back and front? Um, I don't like the lift-up doors at the back and front because it changes the method to what we've done. Um, I've never been a fan of this, really, because you have to have a different gimmick. So what you mean is is essentially that, don't you? Where you where you take out the front and back. I like the I like how open the the final reveal is, but it's impossible to do with with what we've made. Yeah. And it also means that that your turtle. Um, has to be, has to be a bit more, um, has to be looked after better because it is less sturdy. So that's well, the reason we went with that. Still trying to work out what Shane Madurin meant when he says a lot of Welsh on the top shelf, Dave. I've literally no idea. <laughs> okay, uh, right. So those are all the uh, comments for uh, Ali. Um, I don't know. It's Wayne Tamar as well. Uh, Tom Cocker, <laughs> hi guys, hope you're well. What are the little red deal or no deal boxes in the top left hand oh. shelf of the shop? Oh, there they are. The those. little red no deal. Oh, we'll no deal boxes. Those, We've got no idea. Yeah, we'll we? give them some time ago by a customer. So can we use them? He <coughs> didn't want them anymore. So we're still thinking of a use. We'll probably use them at some point. But there's nothing in them. If anyone wants one, let us know. You can have one. Uh, Joel says, uh, I love the coin production. Ali did not fall. I've done that one. Uh, yeah, these are full of stuff. Yeah, more full of um, Done that one. Done that one. What else have we got to talk about today? Because you've got your book corner, haven't you? And well, we've got the Brent Braun book in. Which is yeah, let's really quickly mention that. So Alex is very excited about uh, Brent Braun's... We like Brent Braun, don't we? I love Brent Braun. Oh, very and quickly. Um, Andy Tigley says, would you ever do a Netflix show, Ali? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and, um, Andy, are you a producer for Netflix? If you are, <laughs> yeah, if you uh, are super stuff. Touch. Please drop me a line. <laughs> Lu Louise Douglas says hi as well. Oh, say hi. Uh, so this is uh, Plots, Proys and Other Cons, and we don't know what it is. We don't know what it is, but because it's Brent Braun, uh, Alex was very excited about it. Yeah. And it came in and he went, oh, I've got to buy another book. Ooh, Scrooge over here. There you go. But anyway, I'll read it um, for next week, but it's in... Got no shelves. Uh, we've only got five. Yeah, we've only got five. No, no. Okay. Oh, um, Don't prove my book. Roy Brandler says, six of hearts, one's reverse, laugh out loud. Doesn't mean the cards were Oh, chosen. maybe one of the cards in the deck was reversed when you offered them to Ali. But He's right, it's a six of hearts. Don't tell him. Um, great work, Ali, said Nick Adcock. I uh, hope Ali comes back Ooh, again. He's oh. been nice, honest man, says Andy Tingley. Um, honest. Honest. Uh, honest. You don't know him, Andy. You don't know him like we do, sir. Wait, put that back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put, he's nicking stuff. Put it back. Well, you know my moped went missing, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Pe 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 Petra's been up and down three times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Otto says, is the blue pop dog mask available in the shop? It's not, uh, Otto, um, but if you want one, mate, maybe uh, we'll get one and send it to you uh, as a little thanks to all the uh, Explosions. things you help us with. Yes. Um, uh, hi, also, James Buchanan, uh, Karen. Uh, sorry I'm late. You are late. You've missed it all, James. Always late. Um, yeah, always, always. Uh, Adam O'Brien oh, says, hello. Uh, Jonas says, instead of removing... Uh, so remounting glue, you can use sock glue, or even better, a piece of uh, arabicium gum. Gum, gum that you wet and rub on your hands. It will be sticky as long as it's wet. When the hand gets dry, just add some moisture to them. It's like coughing. Um, uh, yeah. And then we'll be sticky again. It's strong enough to pick up a half dollar by pressure alone. Oh, That's thanks, not Jonas. bad when you're drunk, Jonas. I'm impressed. Oh, he's sober yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's so. Oh, he's so for Jonas. Yeah. Jonas, yeah. Jonas, Jonas has always got some really clever ideas as well, hasn't he? He's very yeah, clever. Yeah, very clever man. Yeah. We must start drinking more to be like Jonas. <laughs> <laughs> um, James uh, says, uh, sorry I'm late. I've been travelling down the M1 in a van. 
Uh, with the Rod Stewart tribute band. Have a great <laughs> weekend. Oh. oh, is that the Maggie Mays? Is it? Uh, is that the Maggie Mays? Uh, am I currently, uh, I'm currently watching from Toddington Service Station while enjoying a lukewarm Ginster's pasty. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's right, Alan Partridge yeah. is watching. Uh, yeah. George says, how much will the cube box cost? We don't know yet, George. Uh, Louise says, uh, sorry if you've already mentioned I joined late, but uh, any new Christmas-themed magic you'd recommend? There's no, not, not really anything no, not come yet. in, not and yet. we've not been able to get some of our usual Christmas stuff in purely because of lockdown. Uh, I underestimated shipping times and found out nearly a month and a half ago I couldn't get anything in before, before Christmas. We, of course, got the Christmas uh, cards that uh, Penguin do. So Could, Couldn't even get yeah. any Christmas uh, train chats this year. The no. Christmas uh, Santa ones, they, they were estimated delivery in the middle of January, so yeah. Yeah, a bit late. Yeah. Uh, Roy Brown says, anyone want to buy a Vespa? I've only used from prop dog to my house. <laughs> uh, George Grayson, um, uh, well, how much will the prototype uh, cost? Uh, George, the prototype George. is, go is going uh, to somebody else, I'm afraid, George. Uh, Andy Tingley says, uh, get a high-vis vest, Alex, and you'll have a suit. <laughs> uh, go in Alex's boat, you'll be sailing laugh out loud. says, boy, uh, love this, says Stacey Ashley. The Very rabbits good. are amazing. Uh, Alex hates these, says I'm looking. Um, Stacy says, How much are they? Uh, I need to remortgage your house, uh, Stacy, to get a few of them. Uh, Louise says, But will this fit in handbags and glad rags? Yeah. Yes, it will. Uh, oh, here we Otar go. says, Very sweet rabbits, but very angle sensitive, obviously. Yeah, 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 massively so. When are you going to write a book, Ali? says Craig Green. Uh, um, I've always been wanting to write a book for years, actually. There uh, we go. There you go. Now so Craig, Craig you heard that first. The exclusive. Inspired, Ali. The exclusive. Yeah, I'll give you yours. Make sure you get royalties. Sold <laughs> exclusively through Prop Dog. Exclusively through Prop Dog. <laughs> um, in fact, write it now quickly. Where are you at? Too many cooks. That's what we could call it. Sean Mann <laughs> says, Why does Rocco look like he's just come out of a pub and his last order's on the hip hop rabbit's picture? <laughs> yeah, we does, discussed this the does. other day. Well, he like always, always looked like that. He always looked like that. Yeah, like yeah. Even the... on the earliest videos, he looked like he's yeah. just. Out Slept all in night. his car. Yeah, yeah. Falling, <laughs> falling in the canal. Yeah, that's his look. And then, yeah, always rough stubble, and yeah, looks like he's got hangover, messy hair, and well, greasy hair, and yeah, that's his style. He's a New Yorker. Uh, Andy Tingley said two bits of paper, two little birdies, three rabbits, thirty pounds. Hmm. Yeah, Andy yeah. Tingley debut with rabbits. Laugh out loud. Stacy says I would pay that. The kids would love it. They would. But will it last? Is yeah. it good quality? Yeah, they're fine. Yeah, good quality. Yeah, I mean it's 3D printed, so it has a little bit of lack in strength, but uh, it's still stronger than acrylic. Yeah. James Howell says, how about the a see-through dye box? Now, there's a challenge. Uh, David Harris, hello, mate. He says, any DVDs you recommend for learning the cups and balls? Um, the Michael Amar ones are pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, um, they're, they're, you've got the complete set one and two, and they go into everything from the, the easiest moves at the beginning to the most difficult ones at the end. Um, Al Snyder's got a nice little, some touches on it, which is not... Which is quite original stuff to him, but yeah, other, than that, other than that, one. you might as well go for. I think I think you're not going to be Amar. Yeah, Larry Jennings one was cut, uh, was chopped yeah. up, wasn't it? So yeah, yeah, I'd go with the Michael Amar sets. They they are really really, um, what's the word? Comprehensive. Yeah, absolutely. Good word. Um, uh, Mike Butner says, uh, "Happy Turkey Day." Does the UK celebrate Thanksgiving as well? No, we no, don't. No, we Mike. Don't. Yeah, most Brits don't even know when Thanksgiving is. I mean, Black so, Friday's yeah. already four weeks long, so it won't, so it won't be it won't be long. <laughs> Jeffrey Oates says, "Is the Paul Daniels box levitation on the Bravura DVD?" Um, no, it's not. I don't know. It I isn't. Know. Okay. I've watched uh, that. Stan so says, "Oi, oi!" From Puppy Pen. I've told the pups a tall, skinny version of me will be turning up tomorrow. Like that loud. <laughs> yeah, I get to see the puppies tomorrow. I know. Yeah, absolutely. And the dogs. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I've always wanted to see Stan's puppies. <laughs> Does Alice get dressed in the dark, says Stan? Uh, you know, yeah, funny enough, so my, my, my children said I could enter the Paralympics based on my dress sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, George says, I'd love one. Um, oh, I think he's, he's on still talking boxes. about that yeah, box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crikey, George. Uh, like a dog with a bone. Uh, just over two weeks to go. Can't wait, says Adrian Twitter. I know, mate. It's exciting. <laughs> um, Tom Cocker says, uh, could I? Yeah, sorry, Adrian's getting Adrian's one of the Adrian's going to be looking at the puppies yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah so um, uh, both Adrian and I are getting puppies from Stan. Uh, Tom Cocker <laughs> says, um, uh, could I have uh, one of the deal, no deal boxes, please? Just like the look of them. I'm probably thinking of a routine with one. Yeah, do you want to write it down? Send me that to Tom Cocker on Monday. Uh, Jeffrey says, uh, "Die as in Welsh name." Ah, yes, oh, die. 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 I, I, I was known as Die Bach when I was little. Yes, little David. Thank die you. Bach. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for that. Yaki da. Uh, Andy Tingley says, uh, "Can you send me a deal or no deal box, Dave? It's for a Christmas party." 
I said, I want to... Um, you don't need uh, an excuse, Andy. Andy Sorry. Tingley. Um, uh, Ali, are you still going to do that trick on... Oh, Penn and Teller, uh, where you turn the catalytic converter into a Vespa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they also yeah. come with an adorable little... Uh, bunny inside, bunny yeah. Bunny or yeah. a duck. Yeah, they're kind of the bunnies as well. Yeah. Uh, Otto says, sober is a relative term in Sweden. <laughs> I don't think there is a Swedish word for sober, yeah, to be absolutely. honest. Uh, George says, uh, please can I have a yeah. deal on Odeo Box? Or George wants oh, one as well. Gosh. Oh, for goodness sake. Save us some. Again. Right, well, we've got three. Uh, how many have we got all together? Uh, oh, Get got, rid of them. Clear some we've, space. Uh, we've got two left now. Um, Goodness me. Oh, I'm fed up yeah. having to move them. Right, uh, almost all the comments and then we can call it Chris. So no more comments, guys. We are running out of time now. Does um, anyone want the lint from my tumble dryer? Could Ali show us some magic? Uh, you got anything you want to show him from, do Ali? Anything you want to... Um, uh, I, what, what, what did he want to see? He just said, can he show, uh, show us some magic? Have a little yeah. think about it while we're doing the last of them. And, well, and if there's anything that. you want to do... Then, I just want to show him the animal. Right, yeah, just feel free to pick oh, up anything Jason. from the shop you want to use if there's anything in here. No, I'm not, I'm not uh, deciding what they're going to... I'm just going to get one. Mike random. says, uh, wow, you pronounced my name correct. <laughs> Teachers would do a roll call and call me Butner. But the entire course class would laugh. Uh, would laugh. Um, yep. uh, uh, Tom Cocker says, thank you, guys. Really appreciate that. Finley says, could you please have a... <laughs> Finley wants a box as well. Might as well get rid of oh them all. Uh, Lee Smith, hi all. Thanks for the continued proper first class customer service. Always going above and beyond. You're most welcome, mate. But we don't give you the full service. Um, we give the full service to everyone else. Yours is like a half service. So uh, everyone else's service is much better, mate. Yeah, just FYI, one of these boxes uh, is missing the cuddly toys. Oh, guess what? Adam Evans wants a box as well. Uh, he so, does. Right, okay. I've already got his name down. Right, you're getting free boxes, so don't complain about the the, the, the the standard of them or the uh, the condition because that one there's got a mark in it and it's random whoever gets what. It's got um, a question mark on it. That's oh, all you sure. need. Oh, yeah. Eamon you. says, can I have a deal on it? I think they're all gone now. Eamon, oh, that's it. They're all gone. Uh, so they'll have anything if it's free. It's if it's free, they'll have anything. Yeah. Anyone want a pair of yellow trousers? <laughs> oh, no one wants them. That's strange. They're, they're free. <laughs> no? There oh. aren't any left in the uh, world. Uh, everyone says, not on your... No, no chance. Um... um <laughs> Like uh, George says, I want some brilliant. lint signed by you. Okay, we're going to get George some lint <sighs> signed. I, I will do this, George, you know that. I'm going to get some lint for my tumble dryer tomorrow and I'm going to send it to you. I'm not gonna, signed, you want to sign. We don't need to start developing tricks. Uh, we just need Stephen to start boxing, mate. Uh, and George says he'll pick up the box next Friday. And uh, Lee says, uh, I'll take half to his day. Oh, right, gosh. okay, we finally got rid of the comments. Let's, uh, what have we got to talk about? Uh, Extreme Burn, back in stock. We said that. Yeah, um, very exciting. Is that it? Yeah. About it? Right, okay, so Alex's book corner. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Right, over to our all new Alex's Book Corner intro. Are you ready? I haven't seen this yet, so I'm going to see it for the first time. Oh, Here we go. Yeah. Three, two, one. Brilliant, Colin, love it, excellent. <coughs> uh, Colin, for you, by the way, that don't know, is the name of Alex's boat, which might just be a submarine at some point in the future anyway. <laughs> it is still afloat. I was on it last night and I didn't get wet, although I do need to pump my bilge. So I don't know what that is, I don't know how to do it, so I'm just on a postcard. But this week's, <laughs> this week's book is For Your Entertainment Pleasure by Daryl. Um, if you don't know who Daryl is, um, you've been living in the dark ages. He was a wonderful magician, known as the Magician's Magician, and he brought out a huge amount of magic, and his magic is so commercial, you wouldn't believe. And we've got his whole set here, so the rainbow robes, uh, acrobatic knot, jumping jacks, all of that stuff is Daryl's. But that was his later stuff. When he originally, he was a working close-up magician, and this is his book on his working set that he used to do. It includes his sponge rabbits, which are absolutely brilliant. Papa hits the big time. Um, which is, I mean, this was when Sponge Rabbits was, was actually coming out. Uh, wonderful coins across routine. Um, so this is very much Daryl um, with his sleight of hand rather than um, Daryl that you might know from his more self-working things. So uh, nothing terribly difficult. Um, this has all been re-illustrated from the original. So these were highly sought after when they first came out and they were out of print for a very long time and they've come back in this is coins across routine here um, so you see the slights are really well taught nice big photos um, so yep coin magic card magic coin cards a bit of sponge really really commercial stuff 
from a person who probably really was one of the masters of how to entertain with close-up magic. Well worth doing. Um, the one trick I really want to point out is, other than Papa Hits the Big Time, which was really good, was the snowshoe uh, sandwich. The snowshoe sandwich, which is a remarkably good trick, and that is where the hot shot uh, slide comes in. You know the... Uh, oh, do a quick... Try and do a quick uh, hot shot cut. Um, so that oop, was uh, from this book all those years ago and he actually catches it between two other cards to form the sandwich. It was a wonderful routine. Back in the day, back in the 80s, it was the routine. Every magician was doing Daryl's snowshoe sandwich. So a highly recommended book. Well done. All done. Oh, and it's very cheap as well. Awesome. Um, it's only £24.50 and you'll, 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 it's all in there. Nigel has asked, can you have an Ali Cook signed teaspoon? Oh, for God. So this is a, um, it's, it's a private thing. We, we, we end up sending out a product to a customer, the, the Uri Geller signed spoon and, and box oh. set. The customer didn't receive his spoon. So we sent it back. We sent a new one out. We gave away the, un uh, the, the, the copy without the spoon. And I jokingly said, I'll sign a spoon if anyone wants it to go with it. And I end up signing like five or six spoons for different people as, as a bit of a private thing. And Nigel wants to know, Ali Cook sign the spoon. So we, are, we, are seriously, would you mind? we are seriously running out of spoons. We, we are, because I buy some more teaspoons. Would you mind just signing a yeah. teaspoon for us, Ali? Right, uh, this, is Nigel. So, Nigel, this is the only one. So, Nigel, this is only because you're a good customer and you look after us, okay? So, um, yes, this is one. Not for, so, anyone else who says, I want one too, tough tough. tough. We've got no more teaspoons now. That's our last one. Uh, and I haven't cleaned it, so it's still coffee stained, Nigel. <laughs> so Add to the uh, value. Well, you better clean it now. He's written and if that's it. on eBay tomorrow, right, I'm buying <laughs> There you go. Awesome, there we go. How Thanks about that? Um, in fact, I, I, I will we'll put it on the close up cam. Look, uh, I bet you've never had to do that before. No, there you go. Look, one Ali Cook signed teaspoon. There we are. Um, I want it framed on your wall when I go and visit Nigel one day. Right, um, can, uh, I just, can I just say that a uh, new card trick, politically correct, will be coming out next week? Oh, 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 oh what, what, it's a politically correct card trick, it's or it's called politically correct? It's called politically, politically correct. correct. It's very I good. That, yeah. If I say so myself, it is very good. Is it politically correct? It's in in a in a. It plays on that theme. Yes, okay. it's very good. Awesome. Um, uh, are you going to have time to do a, a card trick or, or not, or anything or not? I, I mean, I could do like a, a classic Vernon trick or something. It's up to you. I know you're, you're obviously running out of time, so if you want to, we'll do the giveaway now. If you've got time um, to do it afterwards, if not, okay. then yeah, yeah, yeah fine. Yeah. Right, so we are going to do the giveaway. Um, so uh, Ali very kindly chose two random cards earlier on. He did. Um, and uh, you know the rules by now, guys, but if you don't know them, I'm going to tell you all over again because uh, there might be a few first time uh, viewers. <laughs> People still get it wrong. So, two random cards. Your job will be to name a playing card that you think this is. Now, you get one single guess, okay? One guess and one guess only. And it's the first one that we see on our screen that is correct, okay? So, if three of you say it, it's the first one that comes up on our screen. And it may be different to your screen. We'll video the screen so you can see it's the first one coming up. And Nigel Quinn says, uh, Quinn says love you, Ali. Okay, now, you have one minute to call your card. Okay, and you've got to call it after I say go. So I'm going to type out go, and when I do that, you've got one minute to call your card out. If you win, you get to choose any one of the prizes. I'll tell you about that in a second. So here we go. Three, two, one, go, guys. So, uh, Paul, you're too early, mate. It doesn't count. Do Disqualify it again. him. Yeah, Paul Rock. Disqualify him. Always jump in the gun. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, so guys, uh, yeah, if you get the card right, you will get a prize. The prizes can be any of the prizes in our Facebook prize category. So go to the main homepage of the website. Scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll see in there one category that says Facebook giveaway prizes. There's about 50 or 60 prizes in there. You can choose any one of those and we will send it to you. Just drop us an email um, with your details on saying, I want the prize, I want this. Make sure it's in stock and we will send that out to you on first thing on Monday. <coughs> okay, so you have 30 seconds. And uh, yeah, any questions about the prize, do let us know about the whole uh, process. And um, I'll just point out that you know. anyone, that's, uh, anyone that's already been given a box cannot win the prize. Uh, <laughs> I think all of a sudden they might not want to, uh, to have a box. <laughs> It's yeah. my favourite. Right, so the 10 seconds, guys. Up. 10 seconds. Um, uh, I'm going to write no more right. cards. So no more cards. When you see that come up on screen, any cards called after that time now will not be counted. Okay, so it should come up any second. No more cards. There we go. Right, so we have a whole lot of cards. So the first time, the cards called were the Ace oh. of Hearts and the Three of Hearts. Oh. Um, so two people now are going... <gasps> Like that. So Very hearty. If somebody calls the card dead on, it's the first card uh, we come to. If no one calls that card, it's the nearest one to it, the first one we come to. So, for example, if someone chose the two of hearts, 
then the two hearts will be the first one. If someone calls the five of hearts, okay, or sorry, the, the, the two or the four of hearts, then it'll be the first one that comes up nearest to it. So, um... So, so please, you understand. Just don't complain, okay? Yeah. We're giving you away something as fairly as we possibly can. Free of charge and worth a lot of money. There we There's go, two right. Two, so, there? a lot of people have come in. Right, so here we go. Um... Are we at? Okay, Just look for hearts, really. So, uh, Ace of Diamonds, so close, Stacey. So close. Four hearts on Martin Album, so he's, he's the closest so far. Oh, Ace of Hearts, Andy Tingley again. Tingles. Andy. Has Andy got a secret camera around here or something? Because he's won like way. three or four times. Well, congratulations, Andy. You're the first one. Um, so yeah, yes, smack on. Um, so just looking for the three hearts. Two hearts, Finley. Uh, three Finley, but, Ken uh, Francis. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, Ken Francis. Wow, wow. Nice and quick, that's what we well like. Well done guys, yeah, at least we've got two spot on this time. Um, so yeah, all those of you that named, uh, did anyone else name it? Didn't the really. cards, oh, Simon was close to the two hearts. A couple of two hearts going on there. Wow. Wow. We can't be flashing because everyone would have seen it. So, no, there um, we go. Yeah. There we go. No, yeah, excellent. Well, congratulations guys. Um, yeah, we will send out your products. So um, uh, yeah, just drop Andy, us uh, an hey. email, tell us what you want, and we'll get it in the post first thing Monday. Um, my pri has my prize been sent? Said Roy Brownlow. Twice now, Roy. So yes. Yes, we have sent it. Yeah, definitely. If you haven't got it, then you're just lying. You just want. Well, you're at the wrong address. address. Yeah. Uh, Stacy says, "Laugh out loud. Just do this bit so you know I'm not a cheat." <laughs> Again. Yeah. Um, uh, oh well, says Walter. Cheers, guys. Says Chris Gunder. Andrew uh, Short says congratulations. And my first time hole, says Andy Dingley. First time. You've won before. Uh, right, are you uh, going to do. Uh, I, can, uh, yeah. I can do a quick trick. Either. Okay, so yeah, we've got time for a quick trick from Ali. So um, yeah, come on over, Ali, and uh, do your stuff. Do you want a close up camera on it? Or you want uh, to do... Yeah, better if you've got yeah. an overhead camera or something. Yeah, yeah, we can do an overhead. Right, here we go. So uh, let's go across to the uh, close up cam. Oh, wow. Um, all the Let's Mod Cons here. Dun, dun, dun. So, um, just stand this, just stand this <laughs> and I can bit. review Wait myself on. simultaneously. It's like practicing. Oh, hang on. <laughs> so, I think I've read the cable there. Right, so let's go back on it again. Um, what's going on there? I'll move the cable. I think the cable come unplugged. How's that? Hang on. Hang on. Oh, no, it's not going on yet. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Then the cable unplugged itself and went back in again. We had this the other day. I think we've got oh. the cable in here. It's right. We can sort out. No worries. If it doesn't go on here, then we just use the other camera. There we go, it's back on. Yeah, it's just a loose cable, I think. Right, here we go. All right, well, this is uh, Di Vernon's favorite car trick. Uh, uh, that I do like. you want it facing you or facing the other way? Uh, we can just do it like this. Yeah, okay. yeah we'll just so, imagine um, uh, there's a, sp you, you'll have to act like a, a layman for this, I'm right, afraid. Right, the keyboard so. out the way for you right? So I'm, uh, I'm just gonna run through the cards like this. Um, just with my thumb, any time you like, just say stop for me. Stop. Okay, so you could have stopped at literally any one of these, okay? But you stopped at the next face down one. Now this is going to be like a mystery card, okay? okay? And we're going to find three cards which will tell me the name of your card, all right? So uh, if I just go through the deck, uh, the first one here is a king, uh, so that's a good start. Uh, give the cards a single cut this way. Now, if I think if I hit that right, hopefully the next card that's jumped to the top of the deck, that should also be a king as well, the uh, king of spades just here. And simultaneously, it should have brought the last king to the... <laughs> this is almost impossible to do at this angle. <laughs> the king of clubs here. So if you would just turn your card over, you should have the last king. Oh, no. <laughs> It's just as well, if I actually take this ace, like that, if I wave it over the three kings, hopefully we can get out of trouble because this one changed to an ace, that Ooh. became an ace, Ooh. and that's an ace as well. Nice, five aces in the deck. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> and that is uh, Di Vernon's matching the cards. Awesome! Which he said was the best card trick there is. That was the one. He said that was it. There you go, guys. There you you go. saw it here first. And you can buy it in here. You can buy it in the, it's in the Vernon Chronicles. And it's in nearly every Vernon book there is. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> right, well, um, thanks everybody for, uh, for tuning in this week. Oh, just a few more comments. What's going on here? Um, uh, how is the new app selling? Says Daniel. Yes, yeah, doing really well. Thank you. Uh, Roy says it's a pickpocketing DVD. Uh, maybe Postman pickpocketed it. Um, <laughs> uh, a great show. As always, chaps, have a great weekend. Says Nigel. Uh, 
There was only one away, says Finley. Uh, get him next week uh, to do the trick. Uh, no, we've done it now. Uh, Otto says, uh, smooth alley. Uh, well done. Cheers, uh, George says, have a great weekend, guys. Uh, yeah, that's it. So, guys, thank you all for joining us this week. Uh, as always, um, and we will see you next week, uh, Friday at 4 p.m. Uh, have a great weekend, folks, and enjoy the Grand Prix. I will, yes!